Yayo. Yayo, Yayo. Uh oh. His name is Luffy. Monkey D's Nuts Luffy. <laughs> oh, great. Great start. Great start. <clears throat> hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. How you doing, Fluffy? Lazarus, who's secretly one of my childhood best friends. Hello. Hello. Dreaming. Don't give it up, Luffy. Dreaming. Don't fuck it up, Luffy. Dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> hey Fluffy P, anyone else that's lurking right now? Hello, hello? What my depth What what powers would the potato potato fruit give me? I would probably just be like sitting around being a couch potato. Hey. There once was a man oh. named Gold yeah. Roger, who was king of the pirates. He had fame, power, and wealth beyond your wildest dreams. Before they hung him from the gallows, these were the final words he said. My fortune is yours for the taking, but you'll have to find it first. I left everything I own in one piece. That was Ever beautiful. since, oh, pirates oh, from all done. over the world set sail for the Grand Line, searching for one piece, the treasure that would make their dreams come true. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for that, Gino. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, in case you couldn't tell, um, today, we're doing something a little different. Um, y'all know that I've been hyper fixated with One Piece for the past year, in case you couldn't tell with me constantly bringing it up, uh, within streams. Um, I don't know if the music is, like, too low for you guys now. I just don't want it to be, like, too loud and, like, loose focus. Um, I'm playing some Sonic music because it's the only music I could think of that I could just play whatever. Yo. Oh, no. Yeah, oh, yo. oh, you're still yeah, going. Yo, dreaming, don't give it up. Luffy. Oh, you're still going. Dreaming, don't give it up. Zolo. Dreaming, don't give it up. Nami. Dreaming, don't give it, give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. No. Here's how the story goes. We find out about a treasure in the Grand Line, there's no doubt. The pirate whose eyes on it. He'll sing, I'll be king of the pirates. I'm gonna be king, Yayo. 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 Are you gonna do the entire hey, thing? Luffy, that's monkey Are you gonna do the entire be One Piece rap before we start the tier list? <laughs> is, that, is that what's happening here? Because <laughs> if so, uh, feel free to go ahead. I mean, feel free. I can't stop you. Legally, I cannot stop you. You know? Do whatever you want. Uh. So, anyways. Uh, while I still have time before being interrupted. Um, I fucking love One Piece. I've been obsessed with it ever since. I'm waiting for it. Mother, there it is. come aboard and bring along all your hopes and dreams. <laughs> oh my god. Together, nope, nope it's still going. All right, we're not we're starting searching yet. For. He's made of rubber. How did that happen? Yo, How? Ho, he took a bite of gum gum. No fucking Yayo. way. Yayo, his name's Zolo. He's just like a samurai and a lady. Why Nami's not shy? You soft's doing that marksman thing. Sanji's cooking. Chopper's doctoring. Yayo, 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 <laughs> Ho, Ho Yayo. set sail for one Yayo. piece. What's the name of the treasure in the Grand Line, Yayo? Yayo set sail for one piece. That was beautiful. Thank you, Fluffy. Thank you for the performance. That was amazing. That was amazing. I also love how the song says that Chopper's doctoring when that's not what being a doctor is. <laughs> it's like forging legal documents or whatever. That's not... <laughs> yeah, they, they just didn't give a shit. They got like, ah, oh, shit, we gotta come up uh, with a rhyme for Chopper now that he's a crewmate. Ah, oh, shit. Ah, oh, what did we do? <laughs> All right. Uh, anyways, I absolutely did not have this prepared days in advance. <laughs> I can tell. Okay, so, um, I'm gonna try to be quick about this, because we're probably gonna have a long, long stream ahead of us today. Um, I, I'm, I'm obsessed with One Piece. I have recently caught up with the anime that just finished up Wano, and it's starting up Egghead right now. And I've actually um, gotten to the point where, where I'm like, you know what? I don't want to wait for the episodes to come out anymore. I'm just going to start reading myself. So that's the point where I'm at today. So for obvious reasons, um, we're not going to be ranking Egghead. That, that's the only one that we're not going to rank because it's also not on this tier list. Um, it's not finished yet, so I don't think that it would be fair to do so. However, um, if I were to rank it, from what I've read so far, it'd probably be around like A or S. It's been very good so far. Um, also, this whole tier listing is obviously, 
obviously going to have spoilers. Chopper's degree is fake. Lazarus, have you seen One Piece? I know that you were obsessed with Dragon Ball, uh, back in the day. I don't know if we ever, uh, shared your, uh, seen, uh, One Piece. -u. Hey, Bunny Bun, how you doing? It's like how all blacksmiths for forge your credentials. Exactly, exactly. Oh my god, okay. I turned on my fan, it's getting a little too chilly now. Really enough, I'm a little, uh, I'm a little nervous because this stream is literally just gonna be me rambling about, uh, the thing that I like for the next, like, three hours or so. Um, and I'm also scared of public opinions that think, oh, Jesse, why would you put, uh, fucking Alabasta in B tier or whatever? And you know what? You know what? You're gonna get my opinion today, and you're gonna like it. I, I actually, I actually don't even think that there really are many bad arcs in One Piece. Very, very few I would consider to be like bad or even like skippable. I don't think you would even ever like skip uh, an arc from One Piece. Uh, kind of, sorta, too long to be honest. But I've uh watch like giant recaps i mean to be fair but i think that you would like it uh people recommend if you want to get through like fast you could like read the manga and you know there's like <clears throat> certain ways to do it also the uh, live action show is like really good so if you have for like a charming little uh show that and if you're fully call up caught up on the manga i am not i have like 27 chapters left to go according to my app uh but things go crazy on Egghead. I'm so excited to read more of Egghead. I'm really excited for that. If I want to sell soul knives, I just go outside my house. There's always a fence right outside. Yeah, like the Water 7 thing. Oh my god, I cannot wait to talk about Water 7. Long ring, long island. Okay, yeah, we will get there. We will get there. It's all live action. It was amazing. Yeah, I can't fucking wait for season 2. It's like the only good anime adaptation from Netflix I've seen. <laughs> ever which is more praise than it should be i seen up to like after the arlong park arc oh, arlong park i'm gonna gush over arlong park so goddamn much uh when we get to it when we get to it the bleach adaptation was good i've never seen bleach the show or the anime maybe one one of these days i will Manga is way faster. I've been reading for like a week and it just finished Alabasta. Ooh. Hell yeah. You're s speed reading. I, I think I think Amara, like literally after like uh, watching the live action show, <laughs> she, she read the manga and caught up in like a month. And I'm like, god damn. <laughs> Anime of, of Bleach is amazing. I think I remember like trying it uh, a couple years ago. I don't think I gave it m much of a shot, but I feel like these days I probably could after catching up with like a thousand episodes of of peak fiction i i feel like i could watch anything now i feel like i could watch anything now i feel invincible after that took like a month and i have to catch up yeah i took like a year watching the anime <laughs> i'm still gonna watch the anime episodes as they come out because i want to see uh, egghead island animated uh but yeah all right Bleach the anime started out good. Eventually, there was more padding and non-canon arcs, and then there was normal episodes. Ah, okay, so it was uh, one of those. Okay, I see. Well, um, I I took a couple of notes um for some of my thoughts for each arc, um uh, because there are a lot of things that I have probably forgotten, and there's probably th some things that I will forget as we go along. I'm not gonna talk about every single detail necessarily. I'm gonna talk about my, my main highlights, what I loved, what I didn't like, um, and you know, all that good stuff, and overall, where I would rank each individual arc. I, I think S should be saved for, like, the cream of the crop. The king of the arcs. Calcium cannons? What? Is that a nickname for boobs? <laughs> if so, that's the most creative one that I've heard yet. <laughs> I don't think I would ever have the patience to watch the anime here as it is, just so painfully slow. Yeah, it does have its pacing issues, but hopefully the um 
the remake on Netflix is going to be paced way better. Um, we'll have to see about that. Okay, now. I'm going to go through these in chronological order, because I have neatly organized this. This was not organized when I first uh, went onto this site. So I went through the effort of like remembering which art goes where. So, you're welcome. What are we rating? Um, we're ranking every arc in One Piece. Because I am hyper fixated and I'm autistic as fuck and I'm obsessed with One Piece. So we're going to start off talking about Romance Dawn. I think right off the bat, I want to give Romance Dawn an A. And I know it's literally the first arc of the entire story. And it's one of the shortest ones. Where's the old movies? Um, I haven't seen any of the movies. Um, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm mainly talking about the mainline series. We're not going to be talking about the filler arcs, although we will get to, um, honorable mentions, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's like six episodes long. We got, like, the bare essentials. We got, we got our boy Luffy. I love him. He is my funny little scrungle. He's just such, like, a charming main character. And I love his, uh, his chemistry with, with Zoro. Just fucking bribing him <laughs> into joining his crew. Like, hey, if you want me to free you from prison and t take all your swords back, I'll let you join my crew. And he's like, all right, finna bet. And then they just proceed to beat the shit out of every Marine in the backyard. And it's great. It's especially great. I still want to set up a movie night with y'all go to the One Piece movies, especially six. Ooh, what's special about movie six? Ooh. It does contain everyone's favorite character, Helmeppo. I actually love how they did Helmeppo in the live-action show. <laughs> he's such a loser, but he's great. Oh, yeah. And we also get... Yeah, we get Luffy's flashback, which establishes so many things, like, right off the bat. Uh... And not even just, like, the normal stuff, like, oh, here's how Luffy got his powers from the gum gum fruit. Here's how Luffy got his hat. Um, in the scene where, uh, Shanks, like, scares off the, uh, the sea beast, we see him, it's like, he's, he's using hockey, like, 400 chapters before we even know what hockey even is. And I, and I don't even know if that was, like, planned or not. But, that's fucking cool as shit. I love that. It, it's such, like, a crucial th uh, thing for later on. Because, like, hey, Luffy's eventually going to be able to do this, too. That's fucking cool. And also, we got Zoro's, Zoro's backstory. Very sad. Very tragic. His best friend fought a staircase and lost via death. I'm not describing things very well. This has been a terrible idea. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but... Romance on A tier. I think it's like a solid... Short little arc. That's a great start to the series. It's very short. It's just like a solid... Solid little story. I feel like uh, A is like good enough to start with. Um, let's talk about Orange Town next. Now, Orange Town... Has Buggy the Clown... And Buggy the Clown is epic. Although I did not know that at the time when I first uh, saw Orange Town. And of course, it's Nami's proper introduction. And I love Nami. Nami is a queen. Queen <laughs> versus Dowdy Stare. <laughs> That's also when Oda got a taste for blood. Yes, every character needs to have a tragic backstory where someone dies. It's, it's essential. Um, oh, yeah, we also got, like, the sad dog backstory um, in Orange Town. And I remember having some f feelies for that, but, of course, we get... I'm sorry, sad dog. You, you don't get the top tier uh, saddest backstories to make me um, all that much higher. I do love Buggy the Clown, though. So I think, I think B fits. B for Buggy. Buggy is great. He's a girl failure. We love him. Orange Town was really fun. Buggy's a great villain. Oh, Buggy is amazing. And he only gets, like, way better as he keeps failing upwards in, like, the best ways possible. 
He has the most character development. No, he, no, he's he, he doesn't get character development. He he just keeps failing, but somehow getting more and more successful. Like he, even he doesn't even know how he got to where he is. <laughs> Buggy's the new Joker in terms of simps. Do you mean that like people simp for Buggy? Because if so, that is insanely true. A lot of people want to honk this clown's nose. And yes, that does mean what you think it means. Buggy is way better than the Joker. He's the Joker, baby! Oh yeah, it's also where we get our first, like, Devil Fruit versus Devil Fruit fight. And that's pretty cool. I, 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 I loved how, like, creative that his Devil Fruit is. You know, it made, like, a really, like, fun fight uh, with him and Luffy. And, uh... Yeah, I think B tier is, like, a solid place. I might change around where everyone's arcs go as we go along. Uh, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Alright, Surat Village. It features my boy, Usopp. God Usopp. The King. I know a lot of people um, tend to say, like, Oh, well, Usopp's not very good right now, but he gets better in the anime. No, dude. I loved Usopp from the start. Even with like like the uh when while like watching the anime, Usopp was great. You know, he's basically Pinocchio. But if Pinocchio was a sniper. <laughs> you got the Luffy guy now, Mr. B. Best straw hat, let's go. Usopp might be my favorite straw hat in the entire crew. <laughs> he he just might be. Um, I like how, like, his, like, line kind of, like, uh, it's like an inverse of Clawhador's lies, because, you know, Usopp only really lies to, like, uh, you know, help people in a weird way. You know, he tells his stories to, to Kaya, and I love his and Kaya's, like, relationship. I think that they were adorable together, and I was, like, so happy for, like, the live-action version where they actually... Where they actually kissed us good. I was like, yes, 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 deserved. <laughs> this was deserved. Although I also feel like the live action version kind of um, didn't do as much with him as much as I wanted. Uh, hopefully they'll fix that in later seasons. But I'm not here to talk about the live action show. I'm here to talk about. Uh, okay, so I mainly experienced the show through the anime, and that might con uh, <laughs> that might. Uh, that might have an effect on some of my opinions about this. Because, like, w when I feel like the arc is, like, long, it's probably because of how the anime is paced. I love this arc in both anime and live action. Yeah, I think... I think this deserves to sit around at A tier. Like, just below Romance Dawn, I think. I think that, that that's, like, uh, fair enough. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I, I loved, uh... Like the like the setting for the live action version, how they basically just made it like a horror slasher movie, like a uh, in, uh, in Kaya's mansion. Like, okay, that's a good compromise for having it be in the live action setting. You don't have to get like fifty extras for pirates for Luffy to gumu gumu no Gatling. Um, but it also missed out on uh Django, which is like, hey, like Usab couldn't beat up Clawador, you know the main threat. But he could, like, play the support role, which is what he's usually best at. My only issue with Sierra Village is that the villain wasn't all that great. Yeah, Claw Hador's plans don't really make all that much sense, especially in the live-action version. He's not great. And he's not all that, like, memorable in the grand scheme of One Piece. Like, I don't think he's ever been brought up since, uh, the Sierra Village arc. That's saying something, because almost every single character gets brought up at some point. And I do mean almost every character. Baratia is both great and horrible. Okay, yeah, yeah, we will we will start talking about Baratia, actually. Baratia, the Sanji arc. Honestly, I do S, but that's me. Yeah, you know what? I think I'll put their village, like, over Romance Dawn, actually, now that I think about it. Yeah, yeah, that seems right. Now, Baratie, Sanji's introduction, and one of the arcs where he is the most likable, <laughs> because he's actually kind of cool in this arc. 
Now, the villain, Don Krieg, is really boring. But his minion, uh, well, not minion, his second in command, I think? Uh, Gein? I think that was the name? Um, he was way more interesting than is the captain, and I don't know if that's, like, a bad sign or not, that your captain is more interesting. I mean, that, 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 that your second in command is more interesting than the captain. Brate was a mixed bag, in my opinion. Sanji's backstory was good. Oh, Sanji's backstory was, like, great. I'm not a huge fan of him as a whole. Yeah, Sanji might be my least favorite of the Straw Hats. He has a lot of cool moments. Um, I might do, like, a special bonus uh, tier list later where we actually, you know, rank the Straw Hats. But um, Sanji might be my least favorite, but in this arc, he was, he was great. You know, he was solid. And I love it, and I love his backstory a lot. And also, yeah, it had Zoro versus Mihawk. That was like a perfect highlight. That's why I can't put it anywhere like less than A tier. I I I, I just can't. It has Zoro versus Mihawk. Like like how can how can an arc with that be any less than A? Although uh, I I've noticed that there are a lot of like A tier arcs so far. Um, don't worry, we'll shake things up soon. Wish he had gotten a bit more with, San with Sanji in LA. I, I thought that they executed him way better in live action than in... Uh, than in the anime. Because, like... Because, like, so like Sanji isn't, like... I, I don't want to say, like, a creep. He, he, he just, like, you know... He, he's, like, less of, like, a simp and more like a... Like a bad, like, flirt <laughs> in, in the live action version. To the point where it's actually kind of charming. Yeah, I think I think Baratier was actually handled way better in uh, in live action. Yeah, Ty Skyler, that dude just is Sanji. Like he actually like trained to do those like uh to do like his own stunts. It was actually kind of amazing. But yeah, I think I think Baratier. Do I think it's better than Romance Dawn? I'm gonna I'm gonna make it below Romance Dawn just because like the villain sucks. <laughs> but Gein is great. I, I like Gin. Uh, not so much on fucking Pearl. <laughs> he was just like the the other dude for for Sanji to beat up while Luffy punched Don Krieg. I I feel like that 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 fight was just like way too drawn out. Like, oh, I I've got a, like a shield that blows up. Now I have a shield that has needles on it. Try punching through this, dumbass. Now I have a rocket launcher, and it's just like. Man, I totally see why why they cut him out <laughs> to be a cameo in, in live action, because he's just he's just not great. <laughs> he's a milady, yeah, he's a redditor. <laughs> uh but like live action Sanji's like perfect though. He's great. Yeah, G Gin just kind of uh, had a like a bit of a cameo and that was it. But yeah, we're not alright, I think we're done talking about Baratier for now. Uh, let's talk about Arlong Park. Do I even need to talk about Arlong Park? It belongs in S. Like, no shit it belongs in S tier. Right? I mean, I don't think anybody here is going to argue with this. It's Arlong Park. It's Nami's arc. <laughs> this was, like, like, my absolute favorite arc of all time, and no other arc was gonna pass through this, um, in my personal opinion. I, f I feel like there might be, like, one or two that just might. Um, but god, Nami's backstory with Bellamere made me cry like a bitch when I first, like, watched it, um, when I was, like, what, 14? Like, 14, and, like, just, like, starting One Piece, having, like, no knowledge of what Nami's story was. And it just, like, fucking, like, broke me, man. It broke me. Almost as much <laughs> as it broke me when... When she finally asks Luffy for help. And gives her the straw hat. And he... And the best part about, about that scene is... Luffy doesn't know shit about Nami's situation in the manga or the anime. 
And like the live action, like he kind of does. But what's like really important is that he didn't need to know. He just saw that his friend was crying and stabbing herself in the arm, screaming about some dude named Arlong, and thought, okay, which one of you dudes is Arlong? I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> that was all that he needed to know. And, and I feel like that's what makes, like, Luffy such a perfect protagonist for me. Oh, what else is there to talk about? Oh, yeah, Arlong is great. He's a, he's a great, intimidating villain. And I feel like, um, Fishman Island, regardless of how I feel about that arc, and we will get to it, it kind of puts, like, um, the things that he does into perspective a little bit. It doesn't make me, like, you know... Uh, forgive him for any of the shit that he's done. He enslaved an entire village and, you know, basic, basically made Nami a slave. But, like, it kind... Like, you, you kind of get why he turned out the way that he did. But again, we will get to Fishman Island. Arlong is the, is the best villain so far. Oh, there, there will be better ones that we will talk about. Ar Ar Arlong Park is definitely uh, one of my favorite arcs of all time. I, I, I always hear the, the meme of once you get to Arlong Park, you either ride or die with One Piece. You either think, oh my god, this is peak fiction, or you know what, this isn't for me, and I'll just dump it from here. <laughs> Best villain so far, <laughs> racism. <laughs> yeah, fish racism exists. And um, they really don't dive deep into that un until Fishman Island, which I think is like really interesting. Um, that they do address it in the live-action version. I don't know if it's, like, handled the best. Um, I would know, because I'm a crusty white girl. But, you know. I think it's one of the weaker top top arcs, like, Alabasta, Water 7, and it's Eddie's Lobby. Yeah, yeah, we... Again, we will get to those. Easily the best arc so far. So it makes me want to get back into the anime before seeing the massive number of episodes. Okay, my, my advice. Either try out the manga... Or use like a filler, uh, a filler guide for the anime episodes so that you're not, you know, wasting your time with episodes that aren't canonical and don't matter. Like recap episodes and like stuff that just straight up does not happen. I went the anime route because like, I was like, you know what? I, I feel com comfy trying this. It's on Netflix. Sure, I'll give it a shot. I also, like, uh, watched some episodes in dub just so that, um, I could, like, do other stuff. Like, doing, like, the dishes or whatever while watching. I was mostly paying attention to what was going on screen. <laughs> so I didn't really get a lot of stuff done. If you want to react to it on my Twitch, should be a... Can you, can you do that legally on Twitch? I don't... Maybe you've put, like, filters over it. I don't know. Alright, uh, I think we're done talking about Arlong Park. It's peak. It's peak. And now we're getting to... Logtown? Um... Logtown's alright. You know, we get, like, some cool things here. Like, we get Zoro's Cursed Sword. Um... Buggy shows up! And he's epic, as always. Because it's Buggy the Clown. Who doesn't love Buggy? And the first time we get, uh... Good old Smokey. Good old Smokey. I like Smokey. I feel like he's one of the only, like... Uh, good marines. In terms of, like, you know, character development, I guess. Oh, yeah, and also Luffy's dad shows up. <laughs> Although, but we don't know it's Luffy's dad yet. And... He's still yet to do all that much, really. <laughs> oh, hey, C-Top, how you doing? <laughs> how you doing? Actually, I really like Log Town. It was short but fun. Yes! Yeah, it's just okay. That's why I'm putting it in, like, uh... I don't, I don't want to put it in like C because I, f I, I feel like that might be calling it like bad, but I, it's like also just okay. It's just okay. I, I, I think uh, maybe I should like start like naming these for like uh, what should be most appropriate because like I feel like this is like peak fiction with S, amazing with A, and then yeah pretty good with uh with B and then just okay. Mythosy. 
And then D is just desert doo doo. <laughs> Actual just doo doo. Along with the racist stuff did feel a little heavy handed in the live action. Like they didn't trust the audience to understand without all long monologuing about it every scene. At the same time, I know there's plenty of people who wouldn't get it. <laughs> oh yeah, th there's a lot of like fucking dumbasses to be like. <laughs> Yeah, media literacy is dead. <laughs> but yeah, I think Logtown is like just okay. It's like a small little like setup arc that's like very nice. But you know, it doesn't really make me think like, oh man, I want to like revisit and reread it. You know, you know, if it, if it kind of feels like that. Um, Reverse Mountain, I feel also kind of the same towards. It does set up. Quite a few things, like Laboon, and the Grandpa staring gag, which I thought was really funny. And I think, was this, oh, was this the arc that introduced Vivi? I think it was. Yeah, and she was like, she was like a Team Rocket villain, and it was great. <laughs> uh, with her and like, I want to say it was like Mr. Seven? I, fr I forget what dude that was. I can't wait to see more of Dragon, I want to know what his deal is. Oh, you'll see what his deal is. Eventually. I know nothing about One Piece, uh, but I am here. Okay, well, um, then you're not gonna understand anything that's gonna spell out of my mouth for the next two or three hours. So I've been seeing that Kuina and Zoro was anti-feminist, and just like, oh my god, they're so fucking dumb. <laughs> right? Um, yeah. Yeah, this sets up, like, Laboon, the whale, who turns out to be very important, uh, later down the line, but other than that, Again, it, it's not that it's, like, bad. It's not bad. It just doesn't have a whole lot going on for me. Like, Reverse Mountain is just... Yeah, it's okay. I loved Team Rocket-ass VV. It, it, it was great. It, it almost feels like that they gave her, like, a little less personality when she was, like, eventually revealed to, you know, be the princess of Alabasta and all that. But... But I still really like Vivi. I I, I just kind of miss the, the or I just kind of miss evil women. Okay, I'm allowed to miss evil women. Uh, but yeah, uh, reverse mountain's just alright. You know, uh, it, it's not bad by any means. It's just okay. Whiskey Peak. Whiskey Peak, I feel like is also just kind of okay. It introduces Baroque Works, which is you know this. The big plot thing. Why am I here at this ice and a game can have a happy meal and huggy? No, Gino, you cannot have a happy meal. You, you've been on nothing but your worst behavior since the last stream. I'm mad at you. <laughs> You're on a time now, young man. I've been indulging you long enough. Shigo goaded for real love. <laughs> love ruin. <laughs> Hell yeah, we love evil women here in this chat. Oh yeah. So this is where like where like the actual like plot kicks off for the Alabasta saga. Um and then, you know, it's just like short and it's alright. You know? I think the one thing that makes me we'll put this at like the bottom of C right now is I thought that the Luffy versus Zoro fight over a misunderstanding was really dumb and was not necessary, and it feels like it was just Play it out. It's like a little tease for, ooh, what if Zoro and Sa- uh, not Sanji. What if Zoro and Luffy, like, fought? Like, who would win? You know, like, that kind of thing. And, like... If you're gonna do it, don't put over the dumbest re reason, because, like, Luffy would not trust some random dude... Uh... Over... Over Zoro. That, that just does not make sense to me. Hold up, put that higher. Zoro had so much fun. Oh yeah, that is true. That is true. It did have an, a good excuse to see Zoro just kicking people's asses. Like, so, he like soloed almost the entirety of like... Every agent in Baroque works there. Um, except for, um, Boogerman and, uh... Miss... What was her name? Miss Valentine? The, the, the gravity lady. I don't remember what her name was. I think it was Miss Valentine. Oh, that's right! It also introduced my wife, Miss All Sunday, Nico Robin. 
Is the movie night today? I forgot. Yeah, we're gonna have it tonight at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern. We're gonna watch like an episode or two of Columbo. Oh wait, just one more thing. Whiskey Peak introduces uh, my wife, Nico Robin. So I feel like this should be uh, at the top of B tier at best. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. You know what also belongs? Uh. Hmm, I'm tempted to keep this at B, but at like the top of B, Little Garden. I like Little Garden. I feel like a, a lot of people rate this a lot lower than it probably should be. It's got some cool character growth for my boy Usopp. Being inspired by the Giants, which is great. It sets up a lot of stuff like later on. And I really hope it sets up some stuff for, uh... Or when they go to Elbaf. I wish I could stay for lo <laughs> stay for the movie night. You could you, could, you should totally hang, hang hang out for the you know movie nights if you can. You know, are you even in our server? Cause you could join our server. It's some cool stuff. I can post a link for it actually. Boom. There you go. You know, join if you want to. Little Garden deserves to be high on the list. Zoro is fucking amazing here too. Oh yeah, th the bit where he like <laughs> nearly chops off his own leg, and is also just like, oh well, if we're gonna be frozen into like this wax statue, um, I may as well do a cool pose. And the girls are just like, like Zoro, we're about to die. <laughs> we gotta figure a way out of here. Like, ah oh, well, um, you guys are gonna look real stupid if you don't pose. So. <laughs> It was amazing. It was amazing. Love the little garden. Okay, go got a church thing and, and a nut. Uh, 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 that's right. Church exists. God damn it. Well. Yeah, the giants are were, were also super cool. I like uh, Dory and Broggy, I think their names were. They're very cool. And I like them a lot. So I feel like it should be at like the top of B. I think that's fair. Top of B? Or, I, I don't know if I would put it at A. Because I feel like I should save A for parts that are, like, really, really good. Uh, to have a, you know, a bit more going on. And then S is for the cream of the crop. The cream of the crop. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the start of Mr. Prince. Which is weirdly foreshadowing for for, for Sanji. <laughs> well, technically, he didn't call himself uh, Mr. Prince until Alabasta. But speaking of... Wait. Why is Alabasta before Drum Island? That's not right. There we go. Drum Island. I think Drum Island deserves... Ooh, do I want to put... Mmm, I'm tempted. I don't know. I don't know if it should be an S. I kind of want to because I love Chopper. I kind of want to, but at the same time, I kind of want to give it an A because I don't think that, uh... That Wapole is that good of a villain. He's just kind of like the Wario of, <laughs> of, uh, of One Piece villains. <laughs> He's just a big old stinky man. I can't believe that that came up again. Oh yeah, the Giants? Oh yeah, the Giants get brought up. They get brought up quite a bit. Gabe Gino is a straw hat. Alright, you got it. Wait, do I do I have a PNG of, of a hat already sorted up? Let me see. So I don't have to go look for it? Hold on. Uh, pictures. I have a cowgirl hat. I have a cowgirl hat on standby. Should I give him the straw hat anyway? You know what? Uh... You know what? Yeah, it feels appropriate. Let's give him this. God damn it, it's a fake PNG. God damn it. God damn it, I hate it when they do this. God damn it, I hate it when they do this. Okay, uh... Color. Transparent. Okay. 
If you're not actually a PNG, I will strangle you. But not really. I'll just be really mad. There we go. There we go. I forgot her name, but I love the old woman. Wait, what arc are we talking about? Oh, Drum Island! Drum Island! Dr. Kareha! Hell yes! I, I really want, uh... Oh god, oh god, what was her name? Jamie Lee Curtis. I want her to play, uh... I want her to play the, uh... Dr. Kareha in live action. Sanji, She'd be great. give me meat. Meat. <laughs> meat. <laughs> yes. Okay. Alright, we're talking about... We're talking about Drum Island now. I feel like this is, the, like, the first time where, like, VV actually feels like a proper member of, like, the crew. Because she's actually, like, more of, like, a diplomat. I, I know she's not part of the crew. But she, but it's, 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 it's when she starts to actually kind of feel like one of them. You know? She's great. I love Dr. Kareha. I am Lu the Luffy going through hell to climb the mountain j just to, like, see her and Chopper. And Chopper's backstory. This poor fucker's... <laughs> His his misunderstanding of his of his mentor. Uh with the Oh god. This is why I'm not prepared to do tier list rankings where I have to remember all the habits of One Piece. Dr. Hero Look. I think that was his name. Like the like the pirate flag. The skull is a, is a symbol <laughs> that anything is possible. And he just interprets that as like, oh, this skull and crossbones on this like ingredient is healthy. <laughs> and it <laughs> it's the perfect medicine because he's sick. And it accidentally poisons him. Well he was gonna die anyway. But it's still like so sad and tragic and this music Mother, this upbeat my music is not helping. Sounds funny. Why does it sound like drums that liberate? Gear five Gino. <laughs> <laughs> he looks so goofy now. Isn't Chopper the moose looking thing? Yes. Uh, Chopper is a reindeer. He's a blue nosed reindeer. And he is my son. He's a very good boy. I think it's also like the first time where we're like introduced to zone type devil fruits, which is cool. I thought Chopper was a raccoon dog. <laughs> I almost cried at the end with the cherry blossoms. Yes. Oh! <gasps> Toxicure! I finally made it to a stream! Hey, Toxicure! How's it going? Um, I'm making One Piece because I am criminally insane and hyperfixated on One Piece. We got, like, not even halfway done so far. So, this is great. Boku wa Dokta, Tony Tony Chapa. You have two sons. Yes, one is like a funny little reindeer man and the other is an egg. Don't question how, how that works. I cried constantly throughout Drum Island. Chopper's backstory was devastating. Yeah, I think... Mm -hmm. I'm tempted to put it either at the top of A or either S. Either one. Uh, You know what? Top of A. For now. For now. I think I might change my, my mind Doctor. later. Tony Tony Chopper. Yes. <laughs> I have 25 children. It just works. Um, it just works. Thank you, Todd Howard, for giving it a sub brilliant line. Mmm, adoption. Alright. Now we start kicking into Alabasta. I don't know if I want to put it above Arlong Park, but I know for a fact... That Alabasta deserves to be an S. This is what I feel like the start of what One Piece would become. It this arc felt like big um, at the time. Like obviously, there's like way longer arcs. Some of them are too long, but this felt like the first like big one. You know. Like, it's- it's Crocodile! Crocodile's a bastard. Yeah, but he's a- he's a cool bastard. <laughs> the part where he'll, like, poison himself so- so Chopper wouldn't be the one to kill him. 
Man, oh god, yeah, that, 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 that speech of when does a person truly die? A person only dies when people forget about him. Like, I forgot about that part until I rewatched it with a friend. And I felt so much worse. <laughs> I want to unalive him. Crocodile is a perfect villain. I generally can't think of a better villain in this series. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm tied between, like, him and, um, Doflamingo. Uh, but we will get to him. We will get to that pink bastard. Uh, Crocodile. How do I explain Crocodile? Uh, Crocodile is basically the Sandman from Spider-Man. But, um, if he was a mafia boss, trying to take over an entire kingdom via manipulating the people, getting them to, like, kill each other while pretending to be their hero... And he's, like, the boss. And he is super cool. I love him. I think he's, like, the only pirate that has a hook for a hand, weirdly enough. There are, like, zero pirates with, like, an eye patch or hooks for hands except for him. That's, like, a weird observation, but... I am confused. Yeah, well, welcome to One Piece. Oh yeah, and I and I love that all of like the straw hats get their own fights against the uh the numbered agents. Oh and I forgot Bon Clay <laughs> Um I'll I'll be real with y'all. I did not like Bon Clay at first. I, I had to grow to love him like everyone else did. Um mo mostly because of uh what arc was it? Impel Down when he comes back. The fuck is Bon Clay? Um. See, Top, you're gonna be very confused throughout this entire stream. Uh, this this is Bon Clay. Um. Yeah, yeah. Th this was um, a very, very poor visual representation of gay people back in the early 2000s. Um, but despite that. He actually turns out to be pretty fucking cool. <laughs> He's got a great personality. Like, like the fact that he like, like he actually turns out to be like super cool friends with the Straw Hats after everything that's happened. Like, hey, I don't actually have any beef with you guys. I, I actually want to like help you escape Alabasta, <laughs> you know, safely because we, we hung out and, and you guys were actually cool. And he becomes the goat in Impel Down, but, um, again, we'll get to that. We will get to that. We will get to that. He was so calculated and planned so thoroughly, he didn't make any of the common mistakes that most villains make. I mean, seriously, he fucking stabbed and buried Luffy. Oh, yeah, Luffy got fucking wrecked <laughs> by Crocodile twice. And only in, like, the third fight where, like, um, you know... He, he uses his own blood as a replacement for water to actually punch him is great. And of course, um, at the very end, we have my wife, Nico Robin, uh, joining the team. Um, after Vivi's goodbye. And man, the... Oh my god, the good the goodbye. I I knew that that Vivi wasn't going to be part of the crew, but I really wanted her to be after all that happened. This guy, dude, to be a real one. Bon Clay is like the unexpected Chad. Like I know that <laughs> I know that he looks like really offensively bad. And I cannot wait to see how he's dealt with in live action, because he's actually a super important character. But, he's goaded. I love Bon Clay. He's great. For real, for real. I'm going to have to start watching this. Yeah, please do. Please do, so you actually know what the hell is going on. Yeah, I think with the blood was raw as fuck. I mean, so was Hachi, but no. Oh, yeah. They just didn't want to animate an octopus man in live action, which... I don't even know if they're going to be able to get to a Saba Odi, so I don't even know how, if if they will try to uh, fix that. I can't believe that Nami had to leave her girlfriend behind. Yeah, it was a, it's a sad day for the Yuri. 
real sad day. But oh yeah, it's it also the art that introduced Ace. How could I almost forget to bring that up? Ace is like was like the coolest motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ace is uh, not Ace. Uh, Luffy's big brother Ace, the coolest motherfucker around. I loved Ace. Um, big ol' spoiler. <laughs> uh, like, the fact that he's not actually, like, Luffy's b blood brother had me, like, fucking bamboozled, like, later on. Because, like... Because, like, look at him! Fucking look at him! How, <laughs> How would people, like, see these two and not assume that they're blood brothers? How would you not assume that? Fucking look at them. I almost made a terrible joke, but Ace the Goat. Fucking loved all of the fights. Oh yeah, like Zoro learning to like cut steel with one sword style was fucking great. Oh yeah, and Nami's first solo fight, which was amazing. I, I think Nami has like the most like interesting fights uh, out of all the Straw Hats, because she has to, like, strategize, because, like, uh, as she made it clear with Usopp, like, hey, we're, like, the weakest people here. We kind of need, need to, like, step up our game. Um, we're, we're not weirdly strong, like, Sanji and Zoro, and we don't have devil for powers. We gotta find our own way to, like, you know, actually catch up, and she makes a cli uh, Usopp makes a climb attack. And it's Fucking cool as shit. I, I, I love it. It's like such a creative weapon. She is the Weather Witch. She also had to learn to use her weapon on the fly. Yeah, she, yeah, because Usab gave like terrible instructions. Like, oh yeah, only do this part if you want to use it for party tricks. <laughs> None of this for an actual attack, though. Uh, but yeah, Al Alabasta. <sighs> Do I want to put it over Arlong Park? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think we'll get to that when we, when we get to more S-tier choices later down the line. I just really want to. You know what? Yeah, just because it has, like, a lot going on. <laughs> Common Usopp W. Oh, yeah, Usopp's uh, solo fight was also really good. Who is the one who gets killed from a big hole? Through their bod. Oh, that's Ace. Uh, spoiler. Uh. <laughs> Again. Th this is a spoiler stream. Big ol' spoiler stream. <laughs> Just make it clear. <laughs> I mean, it's like the most, like, meme spoiler. Okay. To tell y'all how I got into One Piece in the first place. Um, I first got into One Piece. Uh... Actually, before before I even knew what One Piece was, when I was like what, like twelve or thirteen, I saw my cousin watching the um, Marine Ford arc, and the first episode I saw was Ace di dying. Not a great episode to start with, <laughs> but I was like so interested, like oh oh, what is this? Oh, this, it's so dramatic. And then uh, you know, a year later, I actually started watching. Um, and then I got to Alabasta, and then I took a break, and then, um, I started rewatching, uh, like, last year, and now I'm all cut up. So, you know, I started Dragon Ball Z, Z on Namek as a kid. That's a hell of a way to start. I mean, I guess there's worse ways. Alright, um, I've been rambling about Alabasta for long enough, I think. At the top of S tier, so far. Uh, Jaya. Jaya is just okay. No, wait. Actually, it's a little bit better okay. Because there's some things that it sets up, like, really well. Like, it's a setup arc for Skypea. Which, like, by itself, it's not all that, like, eventful. I mean, there's, like, the bar fight with Bellamy, the spring dude. And... 
you know, like, th that's cool and all. But I think what kind of makes me want to, like, change this from, like, C to, like, B is that it introduces Blackbeard in the most casual way possible. That... <laughs> that makes it, like, like turn your head and be like, Wait, f hold the fuck up, this dude's Blackbeard? <laughs> like... Like, 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 the, the, the dude who's set up to be, like, the final villain of the series is introduced when he and Luffy, um, get an argument over a cherry pie tasting bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I think for that alone, uh, this gets it up to, like, B tier. But obviously there's, like, more stuff going on with it, too, than, than just that. You know, we got... You know, the setup for Skypea, the story of Nolan the Liar, and how that's, like, foreshadowing for the story of Skypea. And speaking of which, Skypea, I know a lot of people don't like this one because of how long it is, but I kind of want to give it an A. I kind of want to give it an A. I think it's a little better than some people give it credit for. Some arcs really, uh, really should uh, do combines though. Like Jai is entirely set up for the next arc. Be yeah, like Jai isn't really that much of an arc, really. Same thing goes for like Reverse Mountain and Loctite, which is why they're so low. It's just because like they're just like setup arcs. Th they don't really have a whole lot going on. Um, in Skypea, I'll admit this one does feel a little long. Which is an, under, an understatement, considering um, the other arcs up ahead. But I think Enaru is like a really cool villain, you know. Hey, this is the arc where the Straw Hats go ahead and fight God, essentially. In, in fact, um, wasn't uh, wasn't this like originally where One Piece was supposed to end? I I don't know if that's like true or not, but I think I heard that originally Skypea was supposed to be like the last place for the straw heads to go like after they beat up like the seven warlords or whatever but then oh it was just like you know what nah i, I i've got more peak fiction to make sky skype is a tier easily especially in retrospect yeah because of like how this so the main things that i usually remember is luffy versus en uh eniru or nl however you want to say it. I, I always say Enaru, but I feel like some diehard fans might yell at me for however I say it. Um, and I like how, like, Luffy's literally the only one that could possibly fight this dude because he's made of rubber. <laughs> and the dude has never heard of rubber before. <laughs> oh yeah, and it also gives us a little more insight into hockey because we learn what observation hockey is. Which is basically, like, mind reading. Well, not really mind reading, but being able to hear people from far away. And, um, predict the future. <laughs> kind of. Like, really short. It's like it's like how Garnet in Steven Universe sees the future, basically. <laughs> that That's how observation hockey works. And I, and, I, and I thought it was, like, really, like, interesting when I first heard about it. And we don't really get a proper explanation of what hockey is until way later. So, really cool. Also, it has Robert, Robin's first uh, solo fight, and I thought that, like, that was pretty good, because Robin is a girl boss, and I love her. This is my wife. I don't want to fix her. I want to make her worse. Oh, goddamn, like, fucking AI pictures in Google. God damn it, I hate how... How AI leaks into image searches now. That's so fucking shitty. Uh, but yeah, I think Skypea might be at like the bottom of A tier. Uh, maybe, um, uh, actually, maybe like above Romance Dawn, but below Syrup Village. Because like Syrup Village ma made me like feel a lot more things, but Skypea had a lot of good setting up going on. Like, uh, Oh yeah, the Mary, it was like, uh, like the mast had broken off because of Chopper's fight with like one of the, one of, um, 
Enaru's like angel dudes. But like but it like mysteriously fixed itself and then and like nobody really questioned it except for Usopp. <laughs> Usopp was the only one who was like mildly curious of like Hey, how did it fix itself? Like that's kind of weird. Wonder wonder if that uh wonder if that's gonna get expanded upon later. Wiggles eyebrows. If I had to guess it'd be uh more like how long Oda originally planned the series to run for. Skype is the most memorable for the character moments like Chopper defending the Mary, Robin trying to keep her distance, but bonding irregardless. Yeah, because like 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 Robin, um yeah, she just kind of tagged along at the end of Alabasta just to be like, well, Luffy, um, I wanted to die in that cavern because, like, Crocodile thought that I was useless because I couldn't read the pondoglyphs for him. Um, but you kept me alive, so I'm hanging out with you guys now. And that, and I was, like, so curious about what her whole deal was that entire time. Like, what is your deal? Are you really, like, a permanent crew member? <laughs> yeah. Nami and the waiver. Oh, yeah, like, the air scooter thing. <laughs> um, everyone putting the pieces together. Oh, yeah, like, how, like, the map works. Oh, I forgot about, like, how, like, the skull-shaped map worked. Oh, yeah, the impact di dials. Oh, the dials were cool. And that was, was an amazing meal that gently scared the shit out of me. Yeah, Slim Shady. <laughs> the Slim Shady dude. And for everyone asking, like, well, why, why do you call him Slim Shady? <laughs> Alright, because it looked like this. <laughs> it also gave us that face, so I, I think it deserves to be an A tier alone for that. Alright, now for... I think our first and maybe only real stinker in this entire list. Oh yeah, oh, uh, actually, b uh, before we get to that, uh, shout out to the G8 filler arc from the anime. That was actually like really charming and fun. I actually like really liked that. Um, as much as it, was, as it was blatantly filler, it was actually like really cool and I kind of wish it was a real arc over this one. Because Long Ring Long Land... Kinda stinks. <laughs> the rap god of lightning! It's Slim Shady, the real Slim Shady. All the other Slim Shadies are just imitating. Yeah. It's especially worse in the anime because they they dra drag out the Davy back fight for another three rounds before they actually get to the point. It's not supposed to be that long. Even though they dragged it out, especially towards the end, Skypea is what I wish we'd go back to it in a way. I missed the times of little, little Garden, Drum Island, and Skypea. Yeah, when it was just more like about like exploring new islands that they were going to, rather than, hey, let's go beat the shit out of this uh, co government terrorist. <laughs> I'm so confused. You're going to be confused for, throughout the entire time. We're, ta we're, we're, we're talking about spoilers for every single arc and how I feel about them. Uh, speaking of how I feel about things, um, I think that the Foxy Pirates are, like, fun villains in theory. They're, they're, they're kind of, like, Team Rocket-ish, where they're not, like, real villains, they're just dudes that kind of get in the way. But, like, the, the Davy Back fights with, like, the blatant cheating <laughs> kind of pissed me off the entire time. Hey, Eternal, how's it going? I'm just gonna play Gene Team. You enjoy that. You enjoy that. Yeah, and, and again, I think that the uh, the anime makes it worse, because, like... Uh, they they wasted, like, so much time to, like, do, like... Oh, let's do, like, another round. It did give us Afro Luffy. Which is possibly the best thing about that arc. Because... It's glorious, but I don't think that's enough to make it any higher than D. I don't think it's like the worst thing in the world. But I, I feel like if people skipped this arc, I would not blame them. Although it ha does have like one cool thing, and it's at the very, very end. 
when Kuzan shows up out of fucking nowhere on his weird like water bike thing and turns Luffy into a popsicle and it made me think oh shit this is how strong one of the three admirals are oh dear god Monther didn't like it so Monther must hate it with all passion no 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 I, I wouldn't say that I hate Long Ring Long Land. I just think it's definitely the weakest of any One Piece arc that I've ever watched. There's a few things really push my buttons in, and Foxy was dancing on them like it was Mirabal Island. <laughs> Screaming in murderous rage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. If people skipped Long Ring Long Land, I would not blame them, because I don't even think that, that, um, that the Foxy Pirates do anything after um you know they lose to the straw hats i i don't think that they've done anything relevant since <laughs> so yeah i don't i don't blame pe people if if they if they skip this one it's like i i don't recommend skipping any one piece arc ever but i think like if you were to do this one i would not blame you i would absolutely not blame you it's the only like really like stinky arc <laughs> I was gonna make a joke of like, oh, this is actually the best arc of all time, and I ho wish that it was as long as Wano, but no, I can't even say that as a joke. I can't even do that. Long Wing Long Land is the only arc that kind of sucks. The only meaningful moment was was like Zoro supporting Chopper. Yeah, yeah, and like Chopper and San Sanji having to like actually try to like work with each other to win one of the games was kind of fun. But, yeah, Long Ring Long Land is just, uh, uh, goddamn Foxy and your stupid Waluigi nose. Give but me Happy Meal Mother or I will take you copy of Sonic Unleashed and your PS3 and take it to a trade store and get money to buy a Happy Meal myself. No, not my PS3 and my copy of, of Sonic Unleashed. No, how could you? That'll get you, like... Two dollars! That's not enough for a Happy Meal! <laughs> okay, um... <laughs> but immediately, right after Long Ring Long Land, one of the worst arcs, we get immediately the best arc of all time. Water 7. There are no words to describe how good Water 7 is. Movie 6, which I definitely want to watch with you, is like if Long Ring Long Land went a very different direction than the best way. Well, I can't wait to actually watch the One Piece movies. Yeah, I... <sighs> Water 7, I, I don't even know how to, like, talk about it properly. I don't. So much happens in this arc. It doesn't feel, like, convoluted. Happy Meals are, are $4 teach. Damn it, all you have to do is save two more dollars. Damn it! Oh, God. I'll go to... Where, where do I even begin? Actually, where do I even begin with Water 7? It's one of the coolest settings for, uh, for, like, a city that's entirely centered around water. Like, I, I, I feel like it's, like, based around, like, Venice or, or something with the way that, um, the, the entire town is just f filled with, um, you know, Side sidewalks that are revolved around like water like here's so like a water elevator like here's how that works and like that's all cool and all but yeah i love frankie <laughs> frankie my boy my super boy uh frankie the the, the pre-time skip version of him this is peak design. This is peak. I love him and his blue hair and his pronouns. He's great. And he was actually like pretty intimidating at like the, the start of the arc too. When he like, you know, robbed Usopp of the money that was supposed to be used to repair the Mary. Which is not in very good shape at this point. It's on the verge of like breaking. And that is what starts the whole internal conflict between Luffy and Usopp. 
which hurt me emotionally when they got into like arguments that that felt like real arguments like between friends it's the most like <laughs> it's the most character drama it was actually awful reading it but because of how it uh, they set up everything to the point it gave us a horrible situation like every arc before could not be beaten up there was no punching the way out of everything it felt like everything was falling apart with no way to fix it yeah and like like Usopp is like in denial of the Mary being out of shape. He just thinks that like, oh, if Luffy's go going to replace the Mary, he's going to replace me too because I'm I'm weak. Like, like for all the people that like don't like Usopp because he's like weak or whatever, like this is his highlight arc. Like he knows that he's that he's not like the strongest person in, in in the in the straw hat crew he knows it but he also feels like that he's useless and that if they get rid of the mary then it's like they're throwing him away too like like the, the mary was like his baby like no one else like really took care of the ship as much as he did even if he didn't do like a good job he's not a ship right but like hey if something is wrong with the mary he'll try to fix it But it's, it's, it's the sort of, like, you know, the, him and, like, Luffy fighting. It, it emotionally destroyed me when, like, Usopp, like, left the Straw Hats. God. <laughs> if, the, if Mary w isn't immune to being thrown out, then she's no longer useful. Then would, uh, then would, uh, when, when would Usopp outlive his usefulness? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But this isn't even, like, all that happens in Water 7. It's just, like, the main highlight. Um, Robin also leaves because of CP9. I'm going to try to make a Geno Plush. Oh, oh, you let me know how that goes. Let me know how that goes. Um, but yeah, like, the whole, like, CP9 twist of, like, oh, who who is trying to kill, uh... The, the president of the of the shipwright crew um turns out to be <laughs> the uh you know the people that work at the shipwrights <laughs> yeah it turns out they're cp9 and guess what we're taking in robin because you know she's actually a criminal that's worth like 20 million berry or actually wait way, way more than that actually like two 200 million how much was she worth i don't remember I make two so I could send you one. Oh, then you let me know how that goes. Yay, I'm being marketed by a fan for free and not gaining any money. I'll call it fan craft. Yes, yeah, so it's fan crafting. <laughs> it's fan crafting. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it was start uh, of like, well, maybe like actually like really like Robin because it turns out, um, she only went with with CP9 to like protect the the Straw Hat crew. Like she actually like grew to like like them, but it's only going on with CP9 to protect them. Let let him drag her over to Annie's lobby, which is also an S tier and somehow better than Water 7. <laughs> And of course, what makes uh, Annie's Lobby the best one is that it has Soga King, the Goat, Soga King. I mean, really, I don't have of uh, much else to say here. It really sucks that uh, Usopp couldn't really be part of the arc, um, but luckily, his good friend uh, Soga King took up after him. Yeah. You know. Yeah, Water 7 was just the setup arc for Annie's Lobby. Really, they're both kind of, like, intertwined into the same story, really. So I, I, I kind of have trouble, like, separating these two as, as uh, different arcs. Um, but yeah. But yeah. Dear God, Water 7 is per- uh, Annie's Lobby is perfect. Fun fact, 
Uh, he comes from Sniper Island, which is inside your heart. I, 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 I love how in the anime they actually get, give him a theme song every time. It's amazing. Ah. But yeah, Soga King is amazing. And I feel like this music really is, isn't uh, fitting for what I'm about to talk about next. Uh, <laughs> Loop, uh, not Loopy. Robin's I want to live scene when the Straw Hats like deliberately challenge the world government by burning their flag to show Robin you'll be safe with us. Tell us that you want to live. Come with us. You're our friend, Robin. We're not going to abandon you. <laughs> Fucking shivers. I still cry at this scene. <laughs> me too. Me too. Really. <sighs> uh, like, like, Robin's backstory is easily the best one out of any character. Not even just, like, the Straw Hats. Of any character. This... This little girl genocide survivor with like a 20 million berry bounty, or even more than that. I always forget how much she's actually worth. Yeah, been on the run, and anyone that's. Yeah, her, her entire island just gone. Wiped from the map. Just because her people were studying a weapon. Not, not wanting to use it, just wanting to like figure out what it was. And the world government didn't like that. So, use the Buster Call, wipe out an entire race. <laughs> As you do. Also, taking a further step back, the way that they started the raid on any lobby was also amazing. And Sniper King, uh, talking with the Giants and changing the tide of the battle entirely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, th that's where, um, his connection with the Giants ri really starts to, like, shine. Be like, oh, hey, Little Garden wasn't just, like, a fun little arc for... Who started to be like, man, giants fighting is cool. Like, yeah, no, he shares, like, a genuine, like, understanding of, of what it's like. To be, like, a real warrior. And that's what I love about that. Yeah, and starting to fight on the train to Andy's lobby was also cool. I like that, like, every straw hat got their own fight. It was really cool, like, like, again... Nami getting her own solo fight against the Soap Lady, while also being just just a little fruity. You know. Just, just, a, just, a, just a little bit fruity. <laughs> oh no, oh no, wait, no, that's not the panel. Well, where's the panel? <laughs> Where she's like... <laughs> Which is like, oh damn, <laughs> what a sexy piece of ass. Wait a minute, I'm starting to talk like an old man. Like, Nami, I know what you are. I know what you are, Nami. <laughs> I know exactly what you are. <laughs> Lesbian icon Nami. Uh, I, I was starting to look for like the exact uh, panel uh, for that line. But, uh, uh yeah, whatever, whatever. If, if folks know. And she uses her climb attack in, like, the most, um, creative way possible by making Mirage clones of herself. And she never does that again. And I'm like, why has she never done that? <laughs> that's, like, that's actually, like, really cool. I, I guess it would make Oda have to draw women in a variety of body styles, but, you know. I'll send it to you. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't feel like, uh, diving on my Discord to go and grab it, but, you know, whatever. I do what I do for, th for the art. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Behold, I have been reborn. The, the giraffe guy. Uh, oh, God, I, I forget what his name was. But, like, the dude who ate, like, the giraffe fruit. And he, he's coping so hard because he, he he's like, dude, I love giraffes. I fucking love giraffes. And you can tell he's like, he fucking hates every second that he has to use the giraffe fruit because he thinks that his design is so fucking lame. He's coping so hard with it. <laughs> Oh yeah, th this is the 
I I I gotta I, I gotta save the image. <laughs> oh yeah, this one too. This one too. <laughs> I ate the bubble bubble fruit. I am a soap person who can create bubbles anywhere on my body. Wow, so sexy. I wish I had a secretary like that. Cripes, I'm talking like a dirty old man. I know what you are, Nami. I know what you are. Oh yeah, it's Kaku. The giraffe guy is Kaku. The dude who everyone jokes looks like, looks like Usopp. <laughs> I don't want to hear it anymore. Giraffes are awesome. I love giraffes. <laughs> oh, this dude's great. This dude's great. Okay, I, I've been like dallying, just like waiting for these images to pop up. I, I've just been, <laughs> I've just been delaying to talk about these, these panels, which are amazing. Oh god, what was I gonna talk about? Oh yeah, Monster Chopper. Monster Chopper um, was peak, and sadly, it's the coolest that Chopper has ever been, and he hasn't really um, gotten much better since. Not 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 that uh, um, that I dislike Chopper or anything. He just hasn't done anything cooler since Monster Point Chopper. Well, Monster Point Chopper was amazing. I stopped at the end multiple times. Oh yeah, we will get to the tears. The tears. But this is also the arc that introduced Luffy Gear 2 and Gear 3. Or Gear 2nd Gear and 3rd Gear. And whatever. And I... And I was like stunned seeing <laughs> Luffy start to fight like a Dragon Ball character with Gear 2nd. Oh god, I forgot about that. Yeah, because of the the, the Luffy versus Luchi fight is one of the best in the entire series. It's so well done. It's amazing. Monster Chop, uh, Monster Point Chopper, the beast mode we didn't know we deserved. Yeah, they, they, they turn him into a fucking kaiju, and it's amazing. But, uh, but, but then in, uh, post time skip, they basically, Professor Hulk did, it made it so that he could talk. Uh, and be in control of it off screen, and you know, it's a little lame, but you know, I, I still love it. Dear Kong, <laughs> yeah, and um, of course, the Mary's funeral made me cry like an actual bitch when I when I first saw that, cause I knew that the the Mary was was done for. I knew that the Mary was gone, cause like otherwise, how would they get this other cool new ship that they got but man man it it made me sob like actual cry like like i don't here's the thing i will get sad during some pieces of media but i won't cry you know i just don't cry very often but the going mary's like funeral scene where like she's she's like finally like, broken after coming back to save them one last time, and they have they 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 put it to rest. They set it on fire and let it sit at sea. And <laughs> chalky milk won't cure that. <laughs> yeah, chalky milk will not help with that. But yeah, for that for all of those reasons, I think Eni's lobby might be the top. Of the tier list and I don't know if any of these arcs uh will budge any's lobby from the top spot. Like I'm torn between any's lobby and water seven, but any's lobby just beats it by like a hair. It beats it by just a hair, I think. It's just that good. And then post any's lobby. Which you know. We get a lot of cool stuff in post Andy's lobby. The rest of the Straw Hats actually get their wanted posters for the first time. 
which is really cool. And of course, it starts the, the gag that um, Chopper's posters are always like way too low. Like his first bounty was like a hundred berry. <laughs> and it does not get much better every time it increases. And I think that gag is so funny. But he deserves so much more, damn it. <laughs> he deserves so much more. My boy Chopper was disrespected. Oh yeah, and fucking Garp shows up. And th that's like the big reveal. Um, that he's actually Luffy's grandpa. Which like, I wasn't sure... How, how, I, how, how, I wasn't sure how to feel about the live action version, just, just, you know, making it, you know, clear that he's Luffy's grandpa at, like, the beginning. I wasn't so sure about that. Like, I'm fine with it now, but I felt a little torn about it when I first saw it. I mean, that Andy's Lobby Water 7 should be considered as a package deal. Alright, yeah, that's fair enough. That's fair enough, honestly. But yeah, I don't know if we learn a little more about uh, Luffy's family tree with uh, Dragon, Monkey D Dragon, uh, being Luffy's dad, and you know, um, still kind of wish that like Dragon <laughs> still did more stuff, you know, on screen to be a little bit more relevant. Um, I I guess like now in Egghead Island he kind of is, but you know. Uh, but I don't feel all that strongly about Dragon as a character. I want to, because it's Luffy's dad. He should feel a bit more important than he actually does. But maybe he does in, uh, Neghead Island. Um, uh, I don't know quite yet. Um, uh, and of course, like, Kobe has, like, the glow-up of the century. Out of, like, nowhere. Like, even before the time skip. Like, hold on. Like, this is how he looks, like, before the time skip happens. And, and, uh, to give contrast. This is what he looks like at the start. Before the two-year time skip happens, it goes from this. To this. And I was like, what, how the fuck did that happen? <laughs> My boy! <laughs> I was, like, actually, like, flabbergasted, like, how the fuck did he do that? <laughs> That's a hell of a workout. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this basically what, like, the arc is, like, you know, Garp showing up, uh, Kobe showing up, and also Usopp's apology, which is also... Which was also a bit of, like, a tearjerker. You know, like, begging for, for him to be let back into the Straw Hats. And also Frankie joining the crew. I really like Frankie. I, I, I don't really talk about... Uh, I, I haven't really talked about Frankie all that much because I don't really have much to say about him. I just really like him. He's super... And yeah, I, I there's a lot about his, like, backstory that I didn't really go over. Um in uh water seven because it I, you folks gotta remember i have a very small memory <laughs> i have a very small brain there's only so much i can like recap and talk about <laughs> me i'm him <laughs> push-up setups and plenty of juice um i think i want to put post in his lobby around like a i guess um just because you know it's like the epilogue of water seven i don't know if i should like include it with like and he's lob lobby in Water 7 as, like, a package deal. Um. I don't know, just because of, like... Yeah, it's just, like, the ending. Certainly not, like, B. I think, like, the, the reveals that we got were, like, really good. And, you know. Yeah. Uh. Also, a big moment is Zoro showing why he's the first mate. Oh, yeah. Because, <laughs> like... Like, like... Usopp had to, like, work to actually, like, um, get back in. He couldn't just, like, pretend that nothing happened. And that was, like, Zoro's, Zoro's whole point. Like, yeah, he, he threw our crew into, like, jeopardy by just, like, running off when he did. You know, we can't just have people, like, hop on and off whenever they feel like it. We have to act like actual pirates and make, like, 
decisions. So, like, you know, if Usopp is going to join us again, he needs to actually apologize. Don't make excuses. No, no, no more lying. You know, just, just, just like sincerely apologize, and he'll, and we can welcome him back with open arms. And that's exactly what happens. And I felt happy inside. <laughs> All right, now. We dive into Thriller Bark, and I feel really mixed on this one. I feel really mixed about Thriller Bark, I'm not gonna lie. I, I love the uh, the aesthetic and settings of it. It's like, it, it, it's like, it's spooky themed. I thought it was like really cool. It was just like Halloween Town. But as, but you know, the island was like a ship. And you know. That's cool as fuck. It also, it also has my boy Brooke. I love Brooke. Brooke, Brooke, uh, kind of prevents this from being like a, like a D tier or maybe even like a C tier. I feel like it belongs maybe like around B. And the reason why it's not going to like A tier or anything so far, um, is because. Gecko Maria is just kind of eh. Like, for like one of the seven warlords, I really don't remember him doing a whole lot. Which, like, I think that was like kind of his thing. He, he just started to be like a really lazy dude who is who's essentially like Luffy um, when he first started, but then he just kind of gave up. And now he has all of his shadows do his work for him. And of course, all of his like zombie dudes. Thriller Bark is amazing up until halfway through the Ors fight. Yeah, that and uh, the reason why I don't want to put this too high is because of Absalom. The dude that uh, uses the invisible fruit to essentially molest Nami in the shower room. That was a very yikes moment. And it made me genuinely uncomfortable, but I don't think it's for the reason that Oda intended. Oh God! And like the and, and this is where I started to like actually kind of hate Sanji because Sanji is upset not not because of you know any uh you know for like any like legit reason to be upset at uh, Absalom, but because he stole the devil fruit that he wanted to peep on girls. And... Oh, yeah. <laughs> that made me hate Sanji so goddamn much. And the damage only got worse as we got to Fishman Island, which is the worst that he's ever been. And that... My my feelings towards Sanji would not be repaired until Whole Cake Island, which is a long ass time. That is a long ass time for him to be like the worst straw hat in my opinion. Like goddamn, it was just the worst. But th this arc also had a lot of good things going towards it too. I loved Usopp versus Perona. I, I love that fight so much. Like, the, the fact that, um... That Perona's ghosts don't affect him is because he's already depressed. He wins via the power of depression. <laughs> and that's... It's amazing. I personally like, love it. And it's also the last appearance of uh, Soga King, as far as I remember. I, I don't think that he uses Soga King again after this. Um, there was Nightmare Luffy, which was pretty cool as, like, a one-time thing. Brooks's backstory with Laboon. Hey, are, hey, you folks remember Laboon from, uh, Reverse Mountain? Well, he's relevant now, and he's part of Brooks' backstory, which is... Which, like, you know, con congrats to, uh, Oda for playing the long game for that one. <laughs> Usopp vs. Perona is perfection. I also just love Perona, um, in general. She's so girly pop. She's a queen. I I, I love Perona so much. <laughs> oh yeah, the comedy in uh in this arc was great. The 
<laughs> the, the scene where where a zombie pops out of the grave, and Luffy just sees sees the zombie. He's just like, huh, that's not right, and pushes him back down. That was fucking comedy gold. I loved that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, and of course, um, at the very end of the arc, right after they, they beat up uh, Gecko Moria, they're all, like, exhausted from beating up a giant uh, with oars. Um, and then fucking Kuma shows up, a warlord that's probably even stronger than Moria was, just wipes the floor with all of them. And of course, um, with Zara being the only only one alive, they have the well, not alive. It, it, it's not like they're all dead, but the nothing happened moment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nothing happened. That was that was peak. I see. Like that scene makes me want to put it like. <sighs> I don't know if I want to put it in C. Just because of like there's a lot of thriller bark that I'm not a fan of. But then it has like moments like that, which are like too good. So I don't know if I want to put it at like the top of C or at the bottom of B. Maybe B. B for Brock. Nothing happened. What you mean? Oh exactly. Alright. You know what? You know what you guys? You're so right. This are kind of boring dog. I mean that I mean I guess that's like pretty like debatable for like some arcs that are like, and eh, nothing happens in this one, and then something cool actually happens. But yeah, I mean, it has Brook in it. How could I not like it? Maybe I like, maybe I like the top of C. I feel, yeah, I think I feel like it's more comfortable there. I feel like it's more comfortable there. It was sad too. Like Zoro thought so little of his life. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, the whole thing with Kuma is like, hey, I'll, I'll let you take all of your captain's pay, but you look like you're already not gonna live. <laughs> like, just like a little sliver of, 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 um, of this pain ball. Just a little fraction of what Luffy is feeling right now. And, yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm shocked that Zoro even survived that. <laughs> I'm surprised that he was still conscious after that, actually. Yeah, um, I feel I feel like maybe either like the top of C or like the bottom of B. I feel like C might be okay. Zoro was trying to trade his head for Luffy's. Kuma was the one that offered that and said, "Oh yeah, because like Kuma, Kuma is like an actually like kind of like a sort of chill dude." Um, again, I have not see uh I've not caught up with Egghead Island yet, but I. Uh, I was wondering what his whole deal was the entire time, and I feel like just now we're starting to learn what his deal was. Zoro was absolutely down to die for Luffy. Oh yeah, he. <laughs> if, if Luffy wasn't like Arrow Ace and he commanded Zoro to suck his cock, Zoro would do it, hundred percent. Just saying. Um. Anyway, uh, with that, <laughs> with that out of the way, Saba Odi Archipelago. This is a really good one! Mm. Sorry to get a sippy sip of water. Ugh. So this is the arc where Luffy punches a slave owner. <laughs> and it's the most satisfying punch in all of anime and nothing will ever compare to it. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, it's also introduces the guy that looks like Sanji's wanted poster. The... I forget his name. But like, like, like Sanji's like shitty hand drawn poster. I thought it was like amazing when the thing that turned out to be a gag was actually like a real character, and that was <laughs> that was just really good. But yeah, um, Celestial Dragons are the fucking worst. <laughs> like they're just like they're just like the one percent slave owners, and it was like. It made it like so hard to watch when you had to watch them just do whatever they fuck uh, they they wanted with people. They treat them like actual fucking dirt. You know, K 
kidnapping whoever they wanted and no one could do a thing about it because they're the Celestial Dragons. Which made it all the more satisfying when when, when, when they shoot Hachi, my poor boy, and Luffy's like, you know what? Sorry, Hachi, I gotta break our promise. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break this motherfucker's nose. <laughs> a reminder that the fake Sanji was the leader of the slave traders. Oh god, wait, was he? I forgot. I forgot what his whole thing was. Was it? I thought. I clearly don't remember enough about um, fake Sanji. I thought maybe it was like Ace Hand Mor Morgan when he had his mask on. Oh, Axe Hand Morgan. Uh. Yeah, that guy hasn't become relevant, is he? But yeah, no. Um. Oh yeah, it also introduces um the 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 pirates that would uh, later be the worst generation. You got Law and Kid and Bonnie and uh, the Castle Guy, Music Guy. Yeah, can you tell? I don't actually remember most of them. <laughs> can you tell? <laughs> the Flying Fish Crew. They they were slavers. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Then they like end up like helping out like Sanji and uh and the crew because of like he, they like fixed his face or whatever. Am I remembering that wrong? I don't know. Yeah, but like Yeah, I don't remember like too much happening in this arc, except for um <sighs> everything going completely wrong by the end and starting what I like to call Luffy's trauma arc, when all of his, like, crewmates disappear, one by one, right in front of his eyes, from Kuma showing up, and, and I thought that he was, like, screwing them over, but no, he, like, in a weird way, he's actually saving them. Uh, but yeah, like, the, the light dude, like, shows up and almost wrecks their shit, and the pacifistas... Like, everything's just going completely wrong for the crew. And, like, seeing Luffy break down like that, I was not emotionally prepared to see Luffy break down and cry because he couldn't protect any of his uh, crewmates. They were just, like, gone instantly. For all he knows, they were probably dead. For all he knows, all the friends that he just made just, like, vanished. Gone. And, like, the, the anime version, the, Luffy's voice actress is so fucking good because, like, I, I like, fucking felt the despair in, it, in, his, in his voice when he just breaks down. And, God, I I kind of want to put Sabaody in S for that. Or, like, at the top of A. Uh, maybe maybe the top of A. I don't I don't know about S. I don't know about S. Like like when when I saw like all the straw heads disappear, I, it just like kind of made me realize, oh god, is this how the time skip happens? Because like I knew that the time skip was like a thing, but I didn't know how or when it would happen. And yeah, this is the beginning of Luffy's solo trauma arc because from this point on for the next few arcs luffy is essentially by himself and amazon lily sonic sonic it, amazon lily is a good arc sonic you, you, you can calm down you can calm down sonic this is a good arc you don't need to be dramatic over this one amazon lily is a good arc <laughs> No! Sonic music, what are you talking about? This this arc is great! Stop! Maybe I should switch over to like a different uh soundtrack thing. Uh you know what? Maybe I'll just like uh skip back to like a different song and it'll just loop over. Cause this is not helping with the uh with the thing. There we go, this might be better. I don't know. Alright. Amazon Lily. It has the introduction of girl boss Boa Hancock. And I love Boa Hancock. I love how she's like 
so dramatically over the top and evil to the point where she kicks a puppy. <laughs> um, but you find out that, um, yeah, it turns out that she was also, like, uh, a slave for the, uh, for the Celestial Dragons. And that's kind of why that she is the way that she is. And she's not doing it because, you know, she's necessarily a bad person. She just does not want to look weak in front of anyone, ever. And I love that. Oh yeah, it's also Luffy. Luffy's just by himself. He doesn't have any any of his crewmates to like help him do anything. And it's a perfect um, demonstration for, you know, why Luffy needs his crew in the first place. You know, like, Luffy can't navigate. Luffy doesn't know where the fuck he's going. He can't make a ship to get off uh, the island, wherever he is. He can't, uh, he, he can't cook the mushrooms or, you know, assume that they're just not poisonous. Because he doesn't have Sanji or Chopper. You know? Like, it's a perfect illustration of, like, why, you know, Luffy needs his crew. I'd say the lower uh, end A tier to BH. Uh, Sabo Odi was kind of eh around a, a few good key moments for me, at least. We're just uh, too many new characters between the admirals and the worst generation. It's really hard to keep track of what was going on with them. The whole slavery stuff was really feeling icky. Yeah, like, yeah, maybe like towards like the end. But like, man, the ending of Sabo Odi was too good. Oh, Hancock is generally one of my favorite characters. Love, uh, like, I love her as a flawed, but also widely sweet and wholesome person. Yeah, and like, <laughs> I kind of, I kind of love her simping over Luffy, even if it's like. A little weird, like, because, you know, in pre-time skip, he's still, like, 17. And, like, post-time skip, I, I think it's a little more acceptable, because, you know, he's aged up. But, like, you know, it's it's just, like, a harmless, like, crush. It's it's still a little weird, because of, like, the age difference. Very uncomfortable. But, you know. I'm back from making Lego Gino. <laughs> it looks fine, I guess. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Oh yeah, uh, what else about Amazon Lily? Oh, what else about it? Yeah, Amazon Lily is, like, really good. I think about, like, I don't know about A tier, but maybe, like, high B tier, like, at the top. I do, like, like, Luffy's, like, a selfish decision, uh, between, um, freeing the, um, the two women that that boa turned to stone or getting a new boat to save his friends is like oh well then free those two girls please because <laughs> like you know that's just kind of the kind of guy that luffy is at the stream i was sending down in the discord oh yeah please do you can probably do something whatever the the anime made it so much worse to be honest yeah i haven't read the manga version of it but i assume that it's uh, a little less, like, weirdly sexual. <laughs> and the monkey's a very innocent love where she doesn't really understand any of it means beyond being very close to another person. <laughs> yeah, she just thinks, like, like, every little thing means, oh, marriage? Because, <laughs> you know, um, Amazon Lily is an island of women where they don't know how men work. Except guns. Yes, give Gino a gun. That's the only thing that's missing. Give him a gun. Give him a gun. Oh yeah, and towards like the very end of like the uh, the arc, um, Ace's life paper is on fire, which would like we learned from Thr Thriller Bark. <laughs> oh yeah, wait no, didn't it start burning on like uh Thriller Bark, and it was like the sign of like oh shit something's wrong happening with Ace, and then they read the newspaper in Amazon Lily, and turns out oh my god. Ace is gonna get executed in Marineford. Well, not in, not in. Well, they didn't start in Marineford. It starts off with Impale Down, which I think is an S tier arc. I have yeah a big one. Yes, the bigger the better. Perfect transition to uh, Impale Down, by the way. Um. So yeah, what what I said about earlier with like Luffy being on his own. He's got to make some new friends, uh, because he doesn't have his old ones, to go on this rescue mission for Ace. 
at the bottom of Impel Down. While I felt like it was a little drawn out at times with like the different layers of hell, uh, which they call each floor of the prison. Like, oh, this one is full of ice that's spiky. And it's so frozen that it, it, you'll get hyperthermia. And then this one, everything is just on fire. And then this one uh, is a dry desert and there is no food and you will die of starvation. Uh, you know, and all that. That wasn't the stuff that really interested me. The stuff that interested me was Buggy, Mr. Three, and Bon Clay all essentially helping helping out Luffy throughout like each floor. Especially Bon Clay. Bon Clay was the goat. It was painful. I uh, wanted to w watch Marie for it in the anime. It just randomly. They keep having long shots of her body. Weird long daydreams of merit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, I, I, I kind of forgot about that. Thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, Bon Clay gets, like, the redemption arc of the century. Like, not that he was, like, always, like, a big villain, but he... He goes through hell to, like, help out Luffy after, you know... You know, freezing to death. Fighting the poison dude. Which, um, I forgot his name. But it's the dude that turns into, like, a poison goopy hydra thing. And Luffy just cannot do anything to counter him. So he just... Nearly dies. And of course, uh, the way that he saved is via... Iva... And the Rocky Horror Picture Show prisoners. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, thanks for that, Amara. Thank you for that so much. Yeah, and again, I, I was, like, a little iffy at first over, um, <laughs> the, uh, the, all of, like, the gay dudes, uh, that were hiding out in the prison. Um, but the Alabaster made it seem like th their friendship wasn't meant to last, but Bon Clay was really ride or die. <laughs> I'll never stop loving him for that. Oh, yeah. That, that's kind of what makes me want to put this at, like, S. Or at least at, like, the top of A. Maybe the top of A. Oh yeah, it also has, um... The one buggy face. Where is it? Yeah, this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this scene where... <laughs> where Buggy's like... Hey, Luffy, do you, do, do you remember when I used the buggy balls to destroy an entire town? And Luffy's just like, no. <laughs> He's just so disappointed. <laughs> oh, yeah, and this is also the arc that just uh, maybe, like, see Buggy and realize, you know what? I kind of get it. I kind of why people, people simp over this dude. I mean, just look at this man. <laughs> Oh yeah, also Crocodile shows up at the end of the arc, and I was genuinely not expecting that. Let alone him, like, um, helping Luffy break out of the prison, because, you know, he definitely has, like, interior motives. It also led to the, um, the, 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 the game theory that Crocodile's probably trans. Because, uh, Iva, the, uh, the dude with the power to literally change people's genders... Um, implies that, uh, that Crocodile has, like, a secret that he does not want to share with anyone. Yeah, um, he's trans as fuck. <laughs> and I kind of love that. Oh, yeah, it also has Jinbei's first appearance. And Jinbei is cool. That's kind of all I had to say about, uh, Jinbei, because he really didn't do all that much in Impel Down, really. So I think, um, I think Impel Down, while a bit long, I, I think it's, it's comfortably at A. Um, which leads us to Marine Ford. I mean, God, do I even have to talk about Marine Ford? Do I even have to? Marine Ford is, is, it's peak. 
it is peak. I don't know if I would put it above Annie's Lobby in Water 7. But it is one of the best arcs in the entire series. It's also like the last arc before the time skip. Which I did not realize until the end of the post-war. Um, God, why do I even start with this? Whitebeard became one of my favorite characters in, like, the short amount of time that we actually had him on screen. Like, I... Like, I knew that he was gonna be, like, a big deal when they first showed him off. But I didn't expect him to be, like, this loving father figure towards all of his crewmates. The way that he was. Like, the dude got, like, stabbed by one of his own crewmates and he instantly hugs him and forgives him because he knows that it was just a misunderstanding and i was like dude <laughs> dude white beard is actually kind of awesome uh and like in such a short amount of time too because we really didn't get to see a whole lot of him up until now oh yeah and also he gave us um uh this meme. The one piece. The one piece is real. So instant S tier for that. <laughs> the One Piece is real. But yeah, so like all of this like this big fucking war, all of this just to save Ace. Who in the end still ends up dying because he he has to say because he protects Luffy from the magma dude who turns into a fucking donut. And I knew that Ace was going to die because, you know, spoilers from years ago. Um, but, but like, Ace dying did, did not make me cry. Luffy completely breaking did. Like, like, like. <laughs> this music is not very fitting for the subject matter. But Ace dying in Luffy's arms and basically saying, Thank you for loving someone like me. It. And, and, and Luffy just like completely breaks to the point where he goes into like shock. It, it is. Uh, it, it, it broke me, man. It broke me. I kind of want to put Marine Ford at like the top of S. But I still love uh, Annie's Lobby and Water 7 a little bit more, so I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know <laughs> if I could put Marine Ford any, any higher than this. And I get much higher. So high. Uh, I oh yeah, and like, just like Shang's just coming in at the end, just being like, no! Fucking fighting, <laughs> and 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 that just that that's what stops the war. Just Shanks coming in and be like, "Hey, stop that! Stop that!" Like, oh, okay, that that, that that's all it took. It, it just takes an emperor showing up. Oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Marine Ford, it's it's an S. It's an easy S, of course it is. All right, post war. Luffy's backstory was great. You know, his past with Ace and Sabo, I really liked seeing it. Although, I feel like we should have gotten them before Ace died, you know? Because, like, seeing what his life was like, you know, after he, we know that he's dead, it, it kind of, like, lessens, like, the impact of, you know... All the stuff that they're saying, like, oh, I'll never die on you, Luffy. Like, well, clearly you did. So. Yeah. Um. But, like, I still really liked uh, that we got to see more of, like, Luffy's past. And, of course, um. You can see what everyone else is doing while they're, like, separated from Luffy. And you see how, like, okay, you know what? We gotta get ready for the new world. We just have to. We're not ready as we are right now. And like... Luffy takes... Uh, oh, oh, what was it? 
Oh god, what what was the dude's name? Uh Rayleigh. Silver Rayleigh. Yeah, he decides to take under uh Rayleigh's wing to like learn hockey. But first sends out a message that only Scrimmage would understand. Instead of meeting up at Sabahodi in three days. Instead, we meet in two years, and that's where the time skip starts. And I was like, oh! Oh, that's how it starts! And, yeah, it also has, like, you know... Yeah, yeah, like, Jinbei bringing Luffy back to reality. Like, what do you still have left to fight for? You still have your friends. And, and that's when Luffy's like, you know what? I have to get stronger for them. And that's how the... The time skip happens, and I really like that. I really like that. I don't know if I, I want to put this in like A, maybe like, mm, maybe like the bottom of A. I think post war is like really good. Again, I it just have like the minor complaint over. It, it's more of like a nitpick, really, of having, you know, more Ace story after he dies, in the in the flashback. I was like, you know. Probably could have done that before, so I could feel, like, a little better. But, you know. Alright. So then I took a break for that. And then finally, we get to return to Saba OD. You know, that's like a B. You know, we get to see everybody come back. Reunited. Uh, all the way to Saba OD again. And it has some really hit or miss post time skip designs. I mean, like, thank God that um, everyone gets, like, different outfit changes for every arc. Because some designs, post-time skip, are really not that good. Particularly Frankie. And they also got rid of Robin's tan. I hated that. I hated that it, they made her ghostly pale. <laughs> I, I miss her tan, goddammit. I don't, I don't care if it's controversial or not. Whoops. Yeah, they- <laughs> I want to like this design, but they made her, like, so, like, white when her, like, <laughs> when her skin tone w was fine just the way that it was. Why did you change it, change it like that, you cowards? I don't care if it was, like, a color mishap in, in the manga. I don't care if it was a coloring mistake. Change it the way it was, cowards. Oh yeah, that's not all I really have to say about uh, Sabo Odi. It's uh, it's all right. It's really not that that much of an of an arc, really. It's just like, yeah, he, yeah, the straw bats are, are are back and they're way stronger now. Okay, <laughs> it's not bad. It's not bad by any means. So maybe at, like the top of C. But yeah, I don't really have much to say about Sabo Odi. All right, now we're getting to another arc, which I. Mm, Fishman Island. This was an arc that they were hyping up for a while. But I don't know if I feel all that strongly about it. I don't know if it's like the worst arc. Like some people say. I know a lot of people don't really like this arc. And I don't think it's honestly that bad. Honestly you don't. Really the worst thing about it is the way that Sanji acts the entire time. Like, God, it was just the worst. Also, the, the wet hair ca caribou guy that was kidnapping mermaids. That wasn't very cool. Wasn't a whole big fan of that. Yeah, and, and it just, like, you know, the fishman racism. It, the fishman racism is essentially the entire arc. And, like, I don't know. Uh, once again, I don't know if... Uh, if Fishman Island really tackles that subject all that well? Like, I can definitely see what Oda was trying to do. But I don't think it was handled, like, that... That poorly. Like, I think, like, the prejudice between Fishman and humans was really interesting to read into. Um, and again, if it gave some some cool perspective on, like, what Arlong was like before, you know, uh, Arlong Park happened. And... Yeah. Can you tell I'm getting, like, a little bit, like, tired of, like, t talking for, like, two hours straight about One Piece? <laughs> oh, 
Oh yeah, and also it's also the uh, Fisherman Tiger, I think was his name. And they introduced Koala in that flashback. And I thought the I thought it was like pretty cool how they actually like brought her back to be like one of the rebels under um Dragon. And I thought that was cool. Uh yeah, it, it just mostly feels like an arc to show off how 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 much like the straw hats have powered up over the past two years, like um like Nami's new climb attack and um L Luffy's um Luffy's usage of like hockey and uh Sanji's Skywalk, which he learned from running away from gay people, which was kind of cringe. I, I really don't get I really don't get how Oda made like really cool queer representation with Impel Down with a with a bunch of like people in the club just kind of hanging out and being real cool about it. And then Luffy just has like no prejudices against them because like, hey, you guys are actually really cool. Um but then also have Saji running away from people to drag. Or trans people. It's not even like made clear what it is. But that's like a whole other um issue. I, I think I want to keep it at like the bottom of C. I don't think it really belongs in D. It's very close. It's very close. And that's why it's at the bottom of C. In the bottom of the C, if you will. But yeah, I don't really have that much to say about uh Fishman. Oh, it it has like the worst fucking villain with um Van Deckerman, I think it was. Was that his name? I don't fucking remember. <laughs> the the dude who like targeted uh, Shirahoshi, the, um, the mermaid princess, ever since that she was, like, five years old, trying to marry her. Why did he have to- I- I- I know that he's a villain, he's not supposed to be anything but a creep, but why did he have to be that much of a creep the entire time? I hated it. I hated it with every fiber of my being whenever he was on screen. I hated it. Oh yeah, but this was also the arc that um started the foreshadow of Joy Boy, which was really intriguing. Um, you know that stuff is cool and all, but I still think that this belongs at the bottom of the sea. Um, not a very good sign for post time skip so far. Honestly, uh, Punk Hazard, Punk Hazard, it's okay. You know, I, I, w I wasn't feeling all too crazy about it uh, when I was watching it, honestly. I, I don't get how the fuck um, anyone in Caesar Clown's, uh, you know, crew ended up trusting anything that he said. Because <laughs> he was very clearly evil the entire time. I don't get how he, how he had as much charisma as he does. Um... But yeah, evil scientist dude experimenting on children to make them giant. Yeah, it kind of makes them like a... Like a pretty good, like, hateable villain that you're clearly supposed to hate. I thought the um the setting idea was pretty cool. How, like, half of it was fire and half of it was ice. But I don't think it was really utilized all that much, really. Because, like, most of it is just spent running away from a giant poisonous sludge monster. In, inside, the, like, the big old laboratory. And that's really the bulk of, like, what the arc was. I mean, of course, there's also, like, Law. Law is really cool. You know? He's a little girly pop. You know? Um. He did, like, the weird, like, body swap thing with the Straw Hats. I don't know why he did that. <laughs> I don't remember why he did that. But it just kind of made, like, some excuse for Sanji to do some stupid shit while he was in Nami's body, and that shit was real annoying. There was also the Yeti Brothers. Do you remember them? No, me neither. N nobody remembers the Yeti Brothers. Oh, God. Uh, but it did have the, the funny moment of <laughs> Luffy asking Law if he was going to betray him. It just says no. And then Luffy just smiles like, huh? Huh? See? Because, <laughs> you know, they're eventually going to take down Kaido. Um, give that a couple of arcs. Just give that uh, one, two, three, four, five arcs later down the line and they'll get to it. Um, Yeah, 
I wasn't really all that big on Punk Hazard. I like how Smoker and Tashigi showed up to help out the Straw Hat crew. Like, they were essentially forced to work together to take down Caesar and get out of the lab alive. I thought the lady, uh, the harpy lady with the snow snow fruit was cool. Haha, <laughs> pun intended. Haha. <laughs> um, I saw Kinemon and Mononosuke were introduced at this point. And I, and I d didn't really care for them that, that much at this point of the story. But, you know, their whole thing wasn't really made all that clear yet. Um, it would be later down the line. It would be, but I just didn't really have much to like care about them at, uh, at that point until, uh, but like Zo. but yeah, until then, uh, we could talk about dress Rosa. Am I boring you guys too much? Am I, am I boring you guys too much? And that's why you guys haven't been chatting too much. <laughs> I'm trying to like blast through some of this because I realize that this stream is starting to get a bit long. I don't want to feel like that I'm like boring you folks with just talking about shit that I like. <clears throat> I'm gonna take a little sip of water. Goddamn. Ah. <sighs> All right, dress Rosa. God, what, what, what to say about dress Rosa? There's a lot of good shit that I like in this. A lot of good shit. Politely listening. Oh, thanks, Jay. <laughs> hey, Jay, when did you show up on stream? Okay, so. Dress Rosa, a lot of people say that it's, like, way too long. And I kind of agree that it does have this weird bloated problem that a lot of, uh, these arcs would have going forward. Um, especially with Wano, it feels like it's especially bloated with so much stuff going on. Um, but it's still good stuff. Oh, I'm getting a little stuffy for, like, no reason. Like, I think Doflamingo is, like... Probably, like, the best villain, m m rival, ri ri rivaling, rivaling, uh, Crocodile. In fact, I've I seen, like, a lot of people comment that, like, um, Dress Rosa is basically, like, the inverse version of Alabasta. It's basically a reflection of it, in a way. Because, like, whereas Crocodile was planned to take over the... Oh, hi, Sally. Hi, Sally. Sally, hi! Sally, what do you think? What do you think of Dress Rosa? What do you think of the Dress Rosa arc from One Piece, Sally? <laughs> Been in for a minute taking notes. Yeah, I'm just blabbing on about uh, this, the funny rubber pirate anime show that I like. Oh, what's I talking about? Oh yeah, yeah. Like, like Crocodile was a dude that wanted to take over an entire kingdom, whereas um, Doflamingo basically already had the entire city like in his pocket by you know being their king and just manipulating everyone behind the scenes mostly with his devil fruit oh yeah not even like his devil fruit like his like um his, his so-called family of uh you know he's basically the mafia like the little girl that like turns people into toys and once that person is a toy Everyone instantly forgets that that person ever existed. That's a terrifying ability to have for a little girl. And yet she works for the worst person to ever possibly do work for. Because turns out Doflamingo is actually an ex-celestial dragon. And his backstory. He went through some like traumatic shit as a kid. But I love that um, despite that. He and his brother, uh, Corazon? Corazon? I, 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 I don't entirely remember his name. I, I really liked, uh, his backstory with Law. Um, I just don't remember the name completely right now. Uh, but they both came out of, like, the situation that they did as completely different people. Where Corazon actually wanted to, like, help people. Um, Doflamingo just wanted to be a piece of shit and actually go back to the status quo of, you know, 
being a slave owner. <laughs> and so, that was basically what he wanted to do the entire time. And I, and I think that he's, like, genuinely, like, like a great intimidating villain. Um, oh yeah, we still have, like, Senior Pink's backstory. <laughs> The, the the one character that that has like one of the most tragic backstories in the entire series is a man that is dressed as a baby and there's actually like a very good reason why he is the way that he is and Oda had no right to make a backstory this good for this man right here Baby. <laughs> Let's baby. <laughs> yeah, Senior Pink. Um, I don't I, I don't know if I want to go too much into what his backstory actually is. Um, I know that there's people that just do not know uh what his backstory was. I, I don't know if I should get into it because I don't want to waste too much time. Yeah, I'm not going to go too into it unless someone, uh, Dilbert asked me to. Because it's a lot. It's a lot to go through. <laughs> for, like, f f for the baby man. <laughs> but yeah, the, uh, Oda had no right to give him such a tragic backstory as much as he did, like... Oh, yeah, this was, like, the king of, like, sad backstories. There was, like, Law's story and Baby 5, what one of the... One of Doflamingo's minions, the the maid girl, that just marries anyone that she sees because she wants to feel useful. Sin your baby. No, don't sin my baby. My baby is a very good, wholesome Christian boy. <laughs> oh god, what am I talking about? Oh yeah, Sabo's alive. <laughs> the the blonde boy in uh the post more backstory. Forgot to mention him. Um, one of Luffy's brothers. Yeah, it turns out he's alive. And he's taken... Uh, he takes Lu Luffy's place. Which, by the way, I like Luffy's like um, disguise as Lucy. The, the bearded dude. <laughs> uh, This has got to be one of my favorite uh, Luffy fits. It's, it's just so good. Like, just just put him on a beard, give him a slum, sunflower shirt, give him a cape and a helmet. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, Sabo taking his place at, during, like, the, towards the end of the tournament, which I thought the tournament bit was, like, a little bit drawn out. Like, uh, the thing about, like, Dress Rosa, th there is so much going on that it was genuinely hard for me to keep track a lot of the time. Shadow, it's me. The devil for you You need sit. It's me, the devil. You need more sin points, Shadow. Let me give you a devil fruit, Shadow. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, it also had the, the, the start of God Usopp, which was amazing. When he accidentally saves everyone. From the toy lady. And also... He, also, he learned... He, he, he has observation hockey. Which I thought was fucking cool as shit. Because he makes an impossible shot. That no one would ever be able to make. And it was like genuinely hard for me. Like, oh my god. Yes. Ooh, sup moments. Ooh, sup moments. <laughs> oh yeah, it also has... Um, first time... Oh, I was going to bring up Gear 4, but I forgot to mention Bartolomeo, the official uh, Luffy stan. Bartolomeo is just like me, for real, for real. Whenever I see Luffy, I pog, just like him. <laughs> I, I see Monkey D. Luffy, and I, and I think, oh my god, Luffy Senpai, please notice me. <laughs> that is what his character is. He's the number one Luffy fanboy, and he's actually kind of amazing. And he's the one that, that starts um, the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. Um, that's just, again, Luffy's fan club. And it's actually pretty pretty amazing. Oh yeah, and uh, I was going to get it too. Gear 4. Now, when I first saw uh, Bounce Man 
out of context, I thought, what in God's name have they done to Luffy? <laughs> like, like a little bit before I actually started properly watching One Piece, I was like, what the fuck is this design? What is this transformation? What is any of this? I, I've actually grown to like really like Bounce Man um, as, as we went on. But it's like such a fucking weird transformation, dude. Um, yeah, I I I I I like this fight with uh with uh the goddamn uh Doflamingo, good old good old Dofi. Um, oh yeah, wasn't that also the introduction of like Devil Fruit Awakenings when he turned everything into string? Because Doflamingo has the string string fruit. I think I think he, I think that was the introduction of like Awakening Devil Fruits, if I'm not mistaken. What's that pick at the bottom? What pick? What the, what the Roblox Luffy? <laughs> Is that what you're referring to? Roblox Luffy? I don't know. So I'm like mod or something. I don't know. I don't play Roblox. I don't know shit. That might be clickbait for all I know. I have no idea. But yeah, like Gear 4 is such like a weird form, but it's also kind of cool at the same time. It's so like cartoonishly weird, which is kind of like Luffy's point. And we will get to like cool other forms that Luffy has later. Yeah, I think overall, I think uh, the thing is like Dress Rosa has so much stuff going on, it's hard to like really recap it all. Um, I think I like it. I I, I think I'm, it might be like the top of A. I don't want to put it at S simply because I don't know. I don't know. It felt like that there was like a little drawn out at times. Maybe it's because I was watching the anime. Maybe that might have been the case. But uh, there were some parts that felt like it took forever to just like get to the point. But a lot of stuff that we got was still so good that I kind of look over those things. So yeah, I don't think it's like it's quite an S, but I think it's at the top of A. I think Dresser was A is like really good. Alright. We're we're close, guys. We only have four arcs left. We have four arcs left. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, it also introduces uh Conjuro, which is the dude that um that uh that Kinemon and Mononosuke were looking for um the whole time. Um, but that's, that's gonna be a whole thing later. Don't worry about it right now. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. If, if you want to worry about it, watch the anime or read the manga and then worry about it. But right now, don't worry about it. I, 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 I just realized that I forgot to bring that up. Uh, Zo! Zo felt like a nice breath of fresh air because it was a short arc. <laughs> it was a pretty nice short arc. It was just like the setup for a whole cake island. Um, I love this fucking horrifyingly giant elephant that is an entire island that's alive it's weirdly haunting but it's home to like the island of furries <laughs> it is the the island of furries um it introduces um wanda which i am still convinced That uh, she and, and and Nami had a thing going on because um, they exchange clothes. Um, this is like Nami's time skip bra, and it's like, <laughs> and they say, oh, 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 here, <laughs> here in our village, we exchange clothes as a sign of friendship, and it's like, uh huh, uh huh, yeah. Is that the reason? <laughs> is that is that the reason? <laughs> Is that why you chained each into each other's clothes? Oh yeah, it also introduces um Carrot, which is great. I love Carrot. Carrot's adorable. And she she is an honorary straw hat in my eyes, because she has gone through like a few adventures with them already. Well, not at like this point, but this is like the start of like her, you know. Um You know, joining like the straw hats on their little adventure to Whole Cake Island. Which I'll I'll get to in a minute, because this was the start of um, Sanji's lore that made him more interesting. Because it turns out that Sanji 
uh, what he called himself Mr. Prince in, in the Alabasta arc. Turns out he's actually a prince. He belongs to a royal family of evil Power Rangers that all hate him. But they need him to get married to uh, Big Mom. Uh, Big Mom's daughter. Not actually Big Mom. <laughs> that was like such a like big run-on sentence. That I, I ended at the worst part that I, that, that I could have. Uh, and it's like, it's like such an interesting, uh, it was, it, it, it piqued my interest in Sanji more, cause like, I, I kinda knew about, about that twist, but I wasn't sure what the actual context was. I knew that like, Sanji had like, siblings, but I didn't know that they were evil Power Rangers. <laughs> and it's, it's sort of him like, you know. Like, leaving the crew, just, like, unannounced, because, like, hey, I, 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 I gotta go with them to, like, you know, protect the rest of my crew. Because, like, otherwise, my evil Power Ranger family or Big Mom's crew will will go after my friends. So I'll just go along with them. I'm, I'm, I'm getting married, apparently. G getting into a forced marriage. Uh... But yeah, so, like, that's, like, the nice, like, uh, kickoff to the whole Cake Island arc. Um, oh, yeah, it also introduces the Red Pondglyphs, which is the end game to One Piece. Because, like, the, the big old, big old gray blocks, turns out there's four red ones that actually lead to where the One Piece actually is. So now we actually have an end game, like, uh, in sight for, for One Piece. We're, we're actually in, like, the, the final saga, believe it or not. Despite how long it is, there actually is going to be an ending, guys. And I think that Zoe Island was actually a really cool setup for that. I think I'm going to put it uh, under Impel Down. Actually, Impel Down is going to be at, like, the top of this. Dress Rose is going to be under Impel Down, I think. Oh, yeah, it also has Ryo Nosuke. Um, R.I.P. Ryonosuke, the real MVP. I miss Ryonosuke every day. Ryonosuke died for our sins. Um. <laughs> but yeah, I think I'm putting it, like, ne near, like, the top of A because it was just, like, such a nice refresher after the marathon that was Dress Rosa. Actually, I think I'm, I'm gonna put it above Dress Rosa now that I think about it. Um. And... Yeah, it's what kicks off Whole Cake Island, which I think deserves to be an S. Maybe at like the bottom of an S, but still an S. I think it's really good. There's more of that uh, drama that we had between Luffy and Sanji that feels pr pretty damn similar to the one that we had at Water 7 with Luffy and Usopp. Um, of course, like, this time, it's just Sanji trying to protect his crew by keeping them as far away as possible. By kicking the shit out of Luffy. And then Luffy starts his hunger strike. Being like, I can't be king of the pirates without you, Sanji. I'm not gonna eat anything until you come back to us. We're gonna- I'm gonna stay right here in this, like, empty hill area until- until you come back and join back with us again. And, like, the- <sighs> It, this was the arc that made me start to actually like San, Sanji again. Because, like, throughout, like, like since Thriller Bark, I really did not see the appeal of his character. Until we got to Whole Geek Island, where um, we see him actually trying to, like, protect his crewmates from, well, I was gonna say, like, from himself, but more like from Big Mom and her pirates, because, you know, she's an Emperor of the Sea. She will fuck your shit up if you cross her path wrong. It's, you know, he's... Uh, again, he has to... His backstory with his evil Power Rangers family, it makes you understand why he only seems to... Uh, well, not only be kind to women, but, but you know, he's in for women so much is because the only two good people in his life as a child were his dead mom and his sister... And then the rest of his family treats him like absolute shit. 
especially his dad, Judge, he's kind of an asshole. You know, trying to turn his kids into, uh, you know, mutant cyborgs that are super strong. And when Sanji turns out to be the only normal one, because his, uh, his mother po poisoned herself so that Sanji would be born as a normal human. Um, yeah, the, the entire family just kind of treats him like shit because he, 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 because he's just like a runt. Fucking locking him up in a dungeon. And, ah, oh, god, it, 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 I actually felt like so bad for kid Sanji. I, I really did. And I also loved that when Sanji does eventually come back to Luffy, after all the shit that's happened, um, you know, trying to escape his arranged marriage and everything. Luffy like eats the uh, the food that he made that he made, despite the fact that it's like you know ruined, you know like, you know it's it's been on the ground, it's raining outside, it's like so the food is like ruined, but Luffy still still like loves it, and it reminds him of his mom, because because his because like Sanji was not a good chef as a kid, but his mom still loved and ate all of his cooking, even if it was like like deliberately bad and like i i i actually like loved his and, and luffy's you know relationship you know being being more you know established on in this arc it was great um and then the actual like wedding crash happens where they're like okay listen your 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 family <laughs> Is about to be killed by Big Mom because it turns out Big Mom is a stinky cheater and wants to actually kill all of uh Germa 66, which is Sanji's family. And just take over their military forces. And despite Sanji's family being such shit, he he cannot bring them to let them die. So so he'll just So he wants to actually go ahead and save them. So he'll kind of go along with the wedding plan. And, and Pudding was great. Pudding being uh, Sanji's quote-unquote bride-to-be who actually turned out to be kind of evil, but also not because, you know, that she's just doing this to get her mom's approval. And when, like, Sanji discovers that, you know, she has her third eye and actually says, oh my god, wait, you're beautiful. And, and she was, like, made fun of her entire life for her third eye, so, like, she did not expect to actually fall back in love with him. And I was like, this is like the one time where I feel like Sanji actually deserves a woman. <laughs> the one time. And it doesn't happen because she has to wipe his memory. And I actually felt so sad about that. Like the one time I wanted Sanji to live a happy life with a woman. <laughs> and it's not meant to be. I also, um, aside from all of the Sanji drama, which is amazing, um... Okay, Brooke has like a 1v1 ag against Big Mom, and it's also like a really cool highlight for me. Um, he doesn't win, obviously. But like the fact that like Brooke got like a copy of like the red Poneglyph and challenged Big Mom 1v1. Brooke didn't get nearly enough credit. I feel like it, not a lot of people actually really talk about that. <laughs> and, and also, um, obviously, um... Luffy versus Katakuri was hype as fuck. It also brought us, um, Snake Man. Gear 4 Snake Man. Which was an improvement upon Bounce Man. Uh, let me see if I can get a, more of a better picture. Yeah, uh, uh, good enough. Like, the more slimmed down and faster version of, like, uh, Bounce Man. It was just so fucking cool. It was cool. I loved, like, the, the whole, like, mirror world fight. I love how Katakori was, like, tough as shit to fight. And he's not even, like, a bad dude. Like, he, he, he he's, he's just a dude that works for his mom. He's just a dude that loves his mom. <laughs> That's really all Katakori is. I love Katakori so much as a character. He's cool as fuck. <laughs> and, and I hope that he comes back at some point. Uh, yeah, but... Oh yeah, it also has like Luffy learning how to use those like 
Haki to do future sight stuff, which was also really cool. Like, he had to learn that, like, during the fight. And I know that, like, Luffy versus Katakuri is, like, one of the most, like, drawn-out fights. It's one of the longest ones. Um, I don't know if it's, if it's longer than Luffy versus Kaido. I don't think so. But I still think it's cool as shit, and I loved it. This felt like an apology letter for, <laughs> for Sanji's character. Because it actually made me start to like him again after all of the shit that he pulls in, like, all the previous arcs. So, yeah, I think... Oof, I don't know if I want to put this at the... I don't I don't think I, I should put it at the... B uh, before Arlong Park. I think, I think it's fine sitting at the bottom of S tier. It's still S tier. It's still really good. And then there's Reverie. Um... Does Reverie actually, like, count? D does this actually count? Because, like, it's... It, I think it's actually, like, the shortest arc in the entire series. I think it's shorter than Romance Dawn, actually. In, like, the manga, at least. Where it's just, like, like three chapters. Like, so much happens in it. But I don't know if I really consider this that much of an arc. It, there's, like, a whole lot of stuff that's, like, a setup for what's happening as the Straw Hats get into Wano. And... Yeah, it's, it's like... Uh, oh, oh god, oh god, what, what even happens? Like, we get to see, like, Vivi again, and a bunch of other past characters that come to, like, this, uh, this, uh, grand meeting, which we don't get to see. We don't get to see the meeting actually take place. We just get to see the setup for it. We just know that it's gonna be... We, we know that it's going to be important. We just don't get to see what it actually is. <laughs> Which like frustrated me. Like, what are they gonna talk about? What 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 is the what is the <laughs> what is the what is the result of whatever this big old meeting is? It also showed like like Emu, the 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 really tall shadow dude. I think that's his name. I really don't know what the fuck his deal is. There's like the the big old empty chair, the big empty chair surrounded by swords. What the fuck does that mean? The giant frozen straw hat? I still don't know what the fuck that means. I- 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 I'm still trying to like, make like theories of what that- what the giant straw hat is supposed to mean. I don't know. It- it sets up like a lot of like cool mystery stuff. So I don't- I don't know if I want to put it in A. It's definitely not like a B. Because it made me ask, like, a lot of fucking questions that I think were, like, really cool. And it was, like, also really cool to see, like, Vivi and Dr. Kareha and, um, you know, all those, like, other uh, past characters again in one place where they actually talk about how fucking cool Luffy is. Uh, maybe I like the bottom of A. Maybe. I don't know. I might change my mind about that later. But probably not because I'm... Because I, I think I may have had that thought about other arcs but uh i, I just I, I just forget things all right now the last arc to talk about wano wano country the biggest arc of the entire series so far it was like what 200 episodes in the anime in like 180 something in, in in the manga with chapters jesus christ so much happens in this one but i love it so much i i, I feel like i i i like uh i feel like it's like a better version of dress rosa in my opinion i i think it's definitely s tier i just don't know where i want to place it maybe above uh ooh. Mm. Alright, let me actually talk about Wano first before we actually start placing it properly. This is the best animated arc uh, so far. I, I mean, we've only seen so much of Egghead being animated um, as of this stream. But... Yeah. Yeah, man. Like, the animation is, like, so good, especially with Luffy's Gear 5, which, um, I'm gonna get more into that in, in a bit, but I feel like I should talk about everything else so far. 
Um, I loved the lore with the Akazaya 9. Like, the, uh, the, the samurai that were all loyal to Odin. And I thought, like, Odin's backstory was, like, really cool. And I, I, I cried when he died. I, I, I knew that he... <laughs> I knew that he was going to die because he was dead the entire time. But yeah, when it turns out, um, yeah, these these samurai are actually from 20 years in the past. And they and they had a time time fruit to travel back to the future. Well not back to the future. But you know, towards the future. So that they could, you know, find more people to help to, you know, actually save Wano from uh what what's that fucking What is that dude? The dude who, who, like, you know, took over Wano and has, like, the Hydra fruit. Oh, God, I, I forgot his name. I forgot his name. Did I write it down? Did I write it down? No, I don't think I did. Um, it's fine. It's probably not important. Uh, but yeah, like, him and Kaido... I was wondering what Kaido's whole deal was because his whole thing uh, that that we saw before in the brief moments that we did see him was that he he was too strong to die. He was literally just built too different to die. Like he would jump all the way from Skype yeah, into an island to try and kill himself, but it wouldn't work because he's too fucking strong. Which like I, I, at that point, why not just jump into the ocean? You have a dragon devil fruit, you would drown. I'm just saying, if you wanted to die, that would be the easiest solution to do so. <laughs> because the way that devil fruits work is that, um, once you eat it, you can't swim, so you would just drown that way. Um, but I guess, like, he also wanted to, like, have, like, a good fight with, uh, like, he wanted to be joy boy but turns out he's fighting joy boy with luffy because turns out luffy is a god luffy is a reincarnation of a god turns out cool fact he's nika the sun god well i think i think it's just like the devil fruit that's that's a that's a model after a god because turns out the gum gum fruit is not a gum gum fruit it's a human human fruit and I thought, this changes fucking everything. <laughs> I, again, I don't think this was something that was planned that far ahead. I know that people say that, like, the the pose that he does in front of the moon is similar to the one in Skype Up, but I think that's more of a callback than actual foreshadowing. Maybe there's, like, more, like, subtle hints that I just didn't notice. Um, I would love to reread and see if there are any other signs. Um... Oh, God, what, uh, what else is there to talk about? I, I, I guess I will talk briefly about Gear 5. Before I get into more, like, cool, like, plot moments that happen in it. So, Gear 5 is, in my opinion, one of the coolest anime transformations that I've ever seen. Because it's just... It, it's wacky cartoon physics. <laughs> but Super Saiyan. That's basically what it what what the, what his devil fruit does now, is that he, he turns into a Tom and Jerry cartoon where he can just do basically whatever he wants, and it's actually so fucking cool. <laughs> and of course, like the animation in the um in the anime so goddamn good even if there's like a little bit too much going on to the point where it was hard to tell what was happening at points i still think that like oh gear 5 is just so good it's like the super saiyan for one piece in terms of like you know how much it just like changes everything about about the series going forward you know of course there's other stuff to talk about too um like Yamato. Yamato, the trans icon that we all love and deserve. The the trans masculine icon. He's great, but I feel like he was introduced a little too late into the story than I would have expected. Cause 
Because, like, before I actually started watching One Piece properly, um, I kept seeing posts about Yamato and how cool he was. And he is very cool. And I think he's very cool, like, trans rep. And I don't care what some chubs will say. Yamato is trans. Um, you can fucking fight me on that. I, I, I will... <laughs> I don't want to debate you in the comments, because it's not worth my time. But I, but I will if I have to. <laughs> yeah, like... I think that Yamato is really cool, but I think he was introduced so late into the story for me to really get, like, like too attached to him, you know? Because, like, he's introduced in, like, the start of, like, Act 3. And, like, I thought he was going to be introduced way earlier, and that's why he was, like, a fan favorite. And don't get me wrong, I, I love Yamato, and I also love trans icon Okiku. But, like... Again, I, I just wish that Yamato had a lot more screen time, you know? Because really, Yamato doesn't really get to do a whole lot. Like, he gets to fight his dad for a bit. He has, like, a really sweet uh, backstory with uh, Ace. And, and, and I love, like, they were gay. They were gay for each other. There's no way that they weren't. Um, and, uh, and he gets to fight the tree guy at the end of Wano. That, uh, that is the reason why he has to stay behind, because he realizes that he has to protect Mononosuke. And speaking of Mononosuke, I actually started to like him and Kinemon a lot more in this arc, because I got to see what their whole backstory was with uh, Odin, and I grew to like them a lot more throughout this arc as they grow, um, for Mononosuke, literally grow, as he gets turned into an adult by the end. Um, the Conjuro twist actually kind of shocked me when it happened. Like, when it turns out that he was actually, like, the traitor who, like, sold him out. Like, I was actually, like, in shock of, like, oh my god, wait, it was actually him? And there was, like, actually, like, uh, some really good, like, um, hints towards, like, him actually being a villain the entire time. Like, a subtle detail is that, um, his devil fruit is that he draws things to life, kind of like the hit game, Drawn to Life and the Nintendo DS, uh, for all of you, um, for all the nerds out there who don't know. Um, and you notice, like, once it, after he betrays him, he starts, like, drawing things actually good, because, like, before, he was, like, a shit artist, <laughs> but you realize he was, like, a shit artist because he was using his less dominant hand the entire time, deliberately slowing everyone down from their goal. Just acting like an idiot the whole time. It's actually a really good twist, and I actually did not see it coming. <laughs> and, you know. It was really good. Really good. And I know that, like, Wano is, like, way too long of an arc. I know it's, like, really stretched out all the time, but I still really enjoy it. I think unlike Wano, I mean, uh, uh, unlike Dressrosa... I can kind of forgive how long it is because of how much I enjoyed everything that went with it. So I think, I think it should go, I think it'll go above Marineford. And yeah, I think for now, that is my tier list. I don't know if anybody else has any, like, thoughts on this, um, if they would place things differently, but I think this is how I would rate things as of now. Um, of course, um, One Piece still has not ended yet as of this stream, but, um, maybe eventually when it does end, I will come back and do this again, because, uh, I like talking about One Piece. It's not very, very often I get to, like, actually just, like, go on and on about how I think about, uh, the funny pirate rubber man show. Uh, yeah, I think there might be, like, a few things that I might rearrange a bit differently, but I don't think that my list is all too bad, honestly. I don't know if anyone has any, like, other thoughts. Um, I, 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 I kind of, just for, like, emotional reasons, I kind of want to place Arlong Park above Alabasta, but I know that it that Alabasta just debatably has like a lot more going on. But Eni's lobby 
is for sure my favorite arc in all the One Piece. It, it, it just belongs up there. And, like, again, there wasn't even, like, that many, like, bad arcs in general. It's just, like, Long Ring, Long Land, and maybe Fishman Island. But even then, I feel like there was some cool shit in Fishman Island that it doesn't really belong in D. It's really close, though. It's really close. Really close to being at the bottom. But I'm not gonna, because, um, you know, there's some stuff that I still liked about it. All right. And that's the stream. This took, what, like three hours? Just about as much as I thought. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm going to save this. Um, and then we are going to find someone to raid. Yeah. And again, um, we could not uh, talk about Egghead Island because it's not, you know, finished yet. Um either in the manga or the anime, so I'm not going to really say anything about Egghead Island. But from what I have seen of it so far, it would probably be somewhere in S, if not like top A. I've been really enjoying it, my time with that so far. Uh, so thank you folks so much for, um, you know, coming along uh, and engaging with my bullshit. You know, just watching me you know, talk about the funny pirate show that, that that I love for the past uh, two and a half hours. I hope you all enjoyed, and if you didn't, um, I apologize. But hey, this is fun. This has been fun for me. I don't know much about it for you, though. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and find someone to raid, because I think we're done here. I think we're done here. And I would love to revisit this idea and, um, you know, uh, at, at some point, whenever One Piece does finish up, and once I am all finished, um, we can do like a more complete version of a One Piece ranking. So this is like just like the 2024 edition, you know, more than anything. This isn't really a complete tier list, you know. Yeah, I I have a lot of like, I have a lot more A's than I expected. I, I was not expecting so many of these to be like A. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, thank you folks so much for uh, coming in today. I know that this was just a long ramble of me talking about uh, things. Yeah, I will have my schedule for what I have planned next week uh, posted soon. I have some ideas planned for what I'm going to do for Easter <laughs> and April Fool's Day. But, um... Until then, I'm gonna see who I want to raid. We're gonna do uh, Toxic Gear. Since they, um, you know, hopped on by earlier this stream, we're gonna go ahead and uh, raid her. Because, you know, uh, she's pretty epic. And yeah, thank you folks so much for uh, stopping by on the stream today. I hope you folks all enjoyed, and I will see you folks next week. Thank you all for sitting through my One Piece ramblings. Have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>